What up, what up, what up? Welcome to the podcast where we think we know everything, but we really don't know shit. We don't know shit, but what we do know is we saw a fucking horror show on Sunday. Well, maybe it wasn't that horrible. That was kind of dramatic, but it was pretty bad. Um, but, but, slow your roll. A lot of people want to say, oh, man, I'm done with Justin. It was Justin's fault. Y'all motherfucking fans kill me. Y'all Bears fans kill me. The most turncoat fans ever. Not all y'all. Some of y'all. Come on, man. This is his second year under Luke Gessie. And we ready to just be done with him now? Who we going to put in? Bajan? I mean, he showed us that he has potential, and he definitely will be a good backup, not a QB1. Come on, man. Stop that shit. Stop it. Really. Anyway, the show that we have today is going to be off the chain. We have a new segment coming up, too. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Our guy, best to do well, is coming up with some game time eats. So he's going to tell us different places to go get some good food before we watch the game. Hopefully, it's not going to be a tragedy like it was on Sunday, but we will get into that. Also, we got posted notes coming up. We got keeping it stack coming up uh, in our guest tonight. Our guest tonight, man, come on, Super Bowl champion. And he, yeah, he he was with the Bears for 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 a few, and uh, he was he was a monster, a monster, a beast. They could use him now too. They really could use him now, and he looks good. Teddy looks good now, like he could actually go get in that line and, and protect just shit better than Brexit. That I st- bad tears. I shouldn't say any names like that. Braxton Jones. <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah. So we're gonna get into all of that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's go. You are now rocking with the Chicago Clubhouse podcast, where they think they know everything, but honestly, they don't know shit. Summer league games, and they tell you about these new up and coming coaches. I think we should get rid of every motherfucking owner in Chicago. Enzo and Caruso both in there on the corner like your defensive generals. But they need to get that strong safety who's not scared to hit somebody. They really don't know shit. <laughs> we are back. We are back. Football is back. But good football in Chicago is not back. Nah, it's 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 not. But hopefully, hopefully we can turn around. It's only two games. It's only been two games, so slow your roll, man. Slow your roll. Let me bring in the All-Star team. We can talk about it. First up, my man who knows every single stat from every single team since the 80s and 90s, basketball and football, my man, JB. What up, JB? You don't look happy. 
Only stat I know right now is 0-3. Long face, bro. You never have a long face, man. But today, shit, you make I mean, me sad. I'm I people can say what they want, feel how they feel. I just I said this last year before the supposed tank. My Angelou said it best. When a person shows you who they are the first time, believe me. And Damn, you quote my Angelou? Because uh. It, it's deep, bro. It's deep. Oh I, my God, man. I, I don't see how how we can go from a time where Justin was looking promising and throwing the ball very well against Pittsburgh with Matt Nagy, Miami, and now this whatever this is. I, I don't know what this is, wow. but this ain't it. Yeah, well, that's my stat for today. Oh, and three. Damn, man. Wow. I feel like it's a funeral right now. So well, sometimes funerals are considered celebrations. So maybe it's the it's the, the funeral for this coaching staff. Woo! Okay. So let's bring in our next guy who just might have the foulest mouth in the city. I have a feeling he's not going to hold back any curses tonight. Foul mouth C. Fuck no, I ain't holding back shit tonight. <laughs> I'm letting this shit ride. Jesus. He came in hot, didn't he? Yeah, I'm Good. not letting nothing. Not holding back anything tonight, fellas. Might as well. The Bears, uh, the coaching staff has held back enough. You might as well let it go. <laughs> Man, it's, it, it, it's terrible. I, I've just been listening to so many different pundits. Everybody's trying to figure out what the fuck is going on with Justin Fields. You know, is he in regression? He ain't in fucking regression. The fucking play caller calls three of the same motherfucking play three times in a fucking row. What fuck the fuck do you think is going to happen? And then David, who was it? Was it David? David White, uh, who, who, who the fuck they lying back? Well, I don't give a fuck on the fuck Devin, his name. Devin White. Devin White. Yeah, he says something. He says, "Oh, we knew this shit was coming." The fuck? All right, so let's. Uh, oh, Levante David. I'm sorry. Let, let, let's, David. Get our, let's get our next All Star in here, man, because we we want to hurry. David. We want to hurry up and get our guest in here. David so, from um, the Bible. It don't matter. The next. Our next all star who has that hawk talk, but we ain't we definitely ain't talking about no fucking hawks tonight. My man Frank the tank. Yeah, they suck ass too. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a hawk talk in my shout outs, that's for sure. <laughs> that's the only know. thing in Chicago right now that actually shows fucking promise. Does it because they got one player? <laughs> no, because of that one player in his first NHL debut in a Blackhawks uniform scores a fucking hat trick. Oh, shit, look like your shit on hard because um, I don't know what the hell. I'm not looking forward to no Blackhawk shit. I don't want to see another motherfucking loser team in Chicago. Oh, oh my no. God. Right. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is, well, it's gonna be a depressing fucking show, that's for sure. But we'll, once we, once we get I mean, live, yeah. into these, once we get live into these conversations, we're gonna probably drop a lot of freaking f bombs in here. Come on, we gotta we gotta pick up this energy, man. Y'all. The energy will get picked up when we start having conversations about. I got some of fucking energy that you're playing. <laughs> what you eat, Valma? Man, I'm eating my fruit tray, goddammit. And JB to answer What's your up, question, bro, it was both linebackers actually both said that they knew. <laughs> the that, look, that's <laughs> even worse. These yeah, are right? So look. We want to bring in. We want to bring in our special guest. Like I said, he was he a Super Bowl champion. He was a beast when he was with when he was with the Bears. He looks like he can still protect Justin Fields now, because Lord knows we need somebody to protect him. <laughs> need you, Bush. So let let's bring him in, German Bush Rock. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, man? Man, it's good. To, it's uh, it's good to be on, man. It's good to be on. It's a little rough around there right now, but uh, well, let's 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 see if them boys can get this thing turned around. But I, I appreciate y'all having me on, though. No, I'm happy, yes, man. Great yeah, man, man, it's great to have you on, man. So want to suit up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, 
That's a that, that's a question. I I tread I tread around that one lightly. I probably got about a series or two left in me. That's about it. Hey, that's all we need. <laughs> hey, give, give it to us on the last drive when we have a possible. Game. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, so man, was, what, what are you doing these days? Yeah, man, listen, I got uh, I got four kids, dude. So I'm I'm, I'm on this full time dad shit. I'm coaching, um, running the foundation, man. I was doing I was just doing some uh, some stuff with Fox out there for the Saints uh, for the, for preseason. So, kind of dipping my toe into the uh, into the media space as well. And and and, one, and me and one of my homeboys have a podcast that we run called the Bush and Me Show. So. Uh, you know, I'm staying staying busy, man. Like I said, we got these kids and they all over the place, and I'm trying to do my coaching thing. Okay, all right. What's your What's your podcast about? Man, honestly, uh, so we kind of pivoted this year. So now, you know, we're in a place now. Obviously, I talk about my three. It's 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 about sports. It's obviously around football. It's about betting. So my my co-host is uh, heavy into the betting scene. He does pretty well um, with his segments that he does, but um. Yeah, man, I'm talking. I'm talking Saints. I'm talking Dolphins. I'm talking Bears, and um, I'm, I'm just trying to highlight every game this year. That's that's kind of the direction that we're moving in with that on okay. my side. Okay. Oh, how yeah. old are the kids? Uh, that's eleven, uh, soon to be ten, three and one. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, so it's you got it's, a it's, long stretch. You're not done yeah, for a while. No, not at all. I got a, I got a middle <laughs> schooler, elementary, pre-K, and one at the crib. So. And they're exactly. all, well, obviously, the three and the one year old aren't in football yet, but the other two in football. Uh, well, yeah. Well, the the oldest one is a boy, so he's uh, he's in the flag. I'm I'm gonna transition him over and put these pads on him when he turns twelve. That's that's kind of my little rule I put on him. Hey, that's wow. smart. Hey, yeah. That's smart. Any any of y'all got kids? What's what's that look like? Did, my did son you, just started flag. Just started flag. Just okay. Flag. I had a seven year old son and a f- soon to be five year old daughter. Okay, nice, nice. Congrats. What about y'all? Well, me and my fiance, with me and my fiance, we got five of these damn jokers. Five. five. I didn't even know that. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> he got three, and I got two. Oh wow, yeah, he got a little Brady bunch. Man, I need a little boy. Man, I won't try. Well, don't worry about it. I got you covered. I got a twenty-four year old, a twelve year old, and a one year old grandbaby. So wow, <laughs> that's a I blessing. Got a JP. Right there. Grandpa JB, <laughs> you look good for a Grandpa JB. Congrats, man! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's all good. I love man. it. I love it. So the 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 biggest question that I have, Jermaine, yeah, is can you speak on the difference between blocking for someone like Drew Brees and then coming to Chicago? And blocking for a myriad of average <laughs> to less than average quarterback Just people. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen. <laughs> yeah, listen. Um, I, I got very spoiled. Uh, coming into the league, getting getting drafted in New Orleans, and just seeing how a quarterback like Drew operated, right? And I was really fascinated week to week, just seeing the preparation, not just him, but like him and Sean, they were like, you know, kind of like, you know, like twins, like Siamese twins, or they were like joined at the hip, you know, Monday, Tuesday, went pretty much every day up until, up until game day. And just to see how they operate and to see how they, you know, how he reads defenses and, and, and how he uses his timing and how he puts the ball uh, in the places or in the spaces that he's, that he's trying to, or the thing I liked about Drew thing every lineman likes about Drew is that he's going to get to a spot. He's going to get at that spot. He's going to set there in that spot. And we had a, we had a rhyme and a reason. I think every team and in, in, in every uh, offense has a rhyme and reason of, of how they block and why they block. But, um, you know, with Drew, it's like if it was a three-step the ball's coming out in three. If it's five, it's coming out in five. If it's a seven, if it's a seven-step drop, hold on set vertical, give him time, you know, give, give the routes time to develop. And um, so you kind of, you know, as, as an offensive lineman, you kind of knew that going in. And, and I, and I would even say shit going into my first year in Chicago, obviously we had a whole different offensive scheme. So, you know, they were trying to preach some of that timing, stepping up in the pocket with, uh, with, with Jay as well. So, um, you know, a different quarterback. I mean, this guy came from, you know, seven step drops, vertical sets every single time. And I never really vertical set until I got, to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Very yeah. interesting. So yeah. in Chicago, it was Jay, 
Did you have Caleb Haney too? No, 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 no. We had a. Uh, I only had two quarterbacks in Chicago. I'm lying. I'm lying. I had Jay, um, and then I you remember. No. <laughs> if you would have said two, that might have been a record. Uh, right, I right, stood up right. there and said that shit don't even sound yeah. right. Right. <laughs> no, in, uh, <laughs> in 2013, we did have two. Uh, you remember uh, Jay and Aaron Rodgers got hurt in that Monday Night Football game in Green Bay. You 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 don't remember? I remember it because it was my first like uh, Bears Packers game, and it was in Green Bay. Jay went down, then Aaron Rodgers went down, and Josh McCown came in and led us to that comeback. Ooh, and, McCown, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. So I mean that that was that was a fun stretch um, that year as well. I mean I hated I hated the way it ended, but um, yeah, shit. So that was two that year, and then we came back the next year. I thought Jay was in for most games, or he might have had uh, who was the backup then kid from out of Notre Dame. Shit, oh, I forgot. Ben? Uh, no, uh, no that was I, a- I, I forget it. Jimmy Clausen. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So we had had uh, like a two game stint with him at 14, and I believe he was out there for a game or two uh, until Jay got back at 15, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Man, this shit is depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to lie. It, it was, it's, that's, it's different because, um, I mean, like I said, my first six years, I, I played in a system where. I don't think the quarterback. I don't think he missed a. He didn't miss a. He didn't miss a start. Um, you know, for whatever reason. You know. You know, it's football. Shit happens. You know, guys get banged up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was definitely different blocking in Chicago. You know, I had to change up the technique a little bit. Took a little adjusting to for sure. I so, don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, man, we need some happiness here, man. Tell us about that Super Bowl, man. Like, flip our spirits a little bit, man. I don't know if that's going to depress us more. Than uh, that. Right. Listen, and they, they that, did some Chicago, magical things. Chicago, Chicago is a place that, man. If you, if, if, if we could get it together there and have a Super Bowl run up there right now, it would be special. And that's what it was, really, to to New Orleans, um, especially it being the first Super Bowl and, and all the tragedy that that region has hit. Uh, I really just felt like man in my heart like we were we were destined to win that year um every game we went into every every game for a a span of a few years we never felt like we was out of it whether we was down seven we some games we was down 24 one time uh in 09 in miami we were down 24 and we came back and we won it and we just always felt like uh you know we always played together right and we always found a way to bring that to bring it back home you know what i'm saying like if, if the offense was off Early in the game, defense picked us up. If the defense is off, offense, we had to score every time we get the ball. Like, that was our mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we just found a way to win, you know. And, and I think that's uh, that's really the key for, for teams and, and, and organizations trying to find a way to, to get that winning edge. Is always find a way to win the game, whatever way possible. So like and if I'm not mistaken, was wasn't that the first year where they really started talking about the NFL being stripped was when the Saints won that year? It was just too perfect. <laughs> right, like right. that's when it started coming out. Right, that's because like, that was Katrina, right? Yeah, it was. It was well. So yeah, Katrina was. Uh, let me see. Oh five. That was oh five, and then so you got oh six where they pretty much didn't practice at all uh, in New Orleans, and then oh seven, which was the year I got drafted, they went to Jackson, Mississippi. I'm sorry, 06 was when they went to Jackson, Mississippi, and they was able to get back into the Superdome when the dome opened, Gleason, block punt, all of that. Right. So, yeah, I got to New Orleans in 07, and we were still in Jackson, Mississippi, which was that was the absolute hottest. Uh, I, I mean, it felt like a hellhole, to be honest with you. Uh, I remember I remember going to Bourbon, I remember going to Bourbon A uh, my first couple of years, and they were, we got days in 80. We got 85 degrees, dude. We got 85 degrees, and guys are talking about it's hot. I'm out here in long sleeves like, this is a cake. Like, we can do I do this all day. I'll practice for hours. Like it was brutal those first couple of years, but um, <laughs> yeah, man, New Orleans was different. Chicago was, you know, it was it was a, it was a good phase in my life. I just wish we would have won more games. Yeah, we, we all wish. Yeah, we all. Did, yeah, we all I mean, listen, all, now, every every year, you know, you're not that last team standing. You always wish you were there. Hey, but we were happy you came, man, because we Absolutely. like, man, Super Bowl winner, two time Pro Bowl. We was like, man, we got us one finally. You know. Yeah. So thank you for your service and picking Chicago. But what what made you pick Chicago, if you don't mind me asking? Um, it's, it's weird because like I had a couple more teams that was in the mix and they wanted the shorter deals, right? And and that was when we were going through all that um 
all that lockout stuff, you know, all, all, all that, all dealing with all of that. So, you know, they weren't handing out a lot of long-term deals to a lot of guys. It's not like how it is now. You know, they weren't handing out a lot of long-term deals. So I had a couple, two years and a couple, and a couple other places. Uh, I think, you know, the reason I ended up going up to Chicago was the, the Tressman hire, which, you know, uh, I, I don't even, I don't even know why they let love yeah. me go, but at the no, end of the day, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I wouldn't be there if it wasn't. So, I, it, it, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, you can't you can't go back and, and change what happened. But, you know, Tressman bought in Aaron Cromer. Aaron Cromer was familiar with me. So then it was kind of, you know, it was a good fit. And, and we were just hoping that we could make something work out. Um, but, yeah, I, I, was, I was super excited. It was, it was hard. I, I'll be transparent with you guys. It was hard to leave New Orleans, but Chicago was awesome. Like, like what, what, what better place to go to to play football? Yeah, we got Tressman's brother here now. <laughs> well, then who was it? Who was it uh, last year or two years ago? Hmm? Who was it two years ago? That was we haven't brother. had a coach since Lovey. That, that was his yeah. other brother. Nah, that, <laughs> we haven't had that, a that was his. That was his fucking nephew. You right. That son of a bitch came so, into town. So, Javon, what what was your personal relationship with Lovey like? Did you did you like him as a coach? Did with Lovey. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't know him personally, but, you know, um, obviously having to study his defense and, and, and everything that he's brought to this league, uh, the style of defense that his teams would run, bro, they were different. Like they, they, they had a good defensive squad. And, and um, like I said, I didn't know him personally, but I, ha I had a lot of respect for him, you know, what he's brought to this game and, and the success he had before and after, you know, Chicago to really pick himself back up and, and, and have success. So. Um, I think he would have been a great person, a great coach to play for. I mean, when I got up there, I heard nothing but great things. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, obviously, you can't live in the past again right. when when you got a new when you got a whole new staff. Right. Yeah, I, I hear you, man. It, damn, so, it's it's like a funeral is happening, man. Yeah. It, the Bears, <laughs> the Bears game was that bad. Hey, listen, I mean, yeah. Coming off the the first, the, you know, I didn't I didn't see week one going like that. Well, you're yeah. I, yeah. Didn't, yeah, I, don't, I don't mean to, I don't mean to pour salt in that wound, but <laughs> we got to uh, talk about it because I mean you lived it too. Once you got here, you lived the rivalry. You you was part of us. Right. One of the last times we really beat Packers, you know, consistently was in that era somewhere. Right. To be switching on to the like you said the McCown game, Jay. But just like rivalries aside, just from your professional opinion. Like what is going on? I mean, I you know with, you talk, with, with the Bears team now, I I just see I see a lot of self inflicted wounds. I see a lot of inconsistency. I I went back and so I was watching the game Sunday. I was watching. I watched the last two games. Uh, you know, I follow a couple other teams as well. So like I'm watching and I'm watching, and it's competitive. You look at the Packers game; it's competitive in the first half. Now, is, are you winning the game? No, but. If you can find a way to not give that ball up, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, they gave up a field goal right before first half, where I felt yeah. like they they could have went into that went in to halftime with uh, less margin. You would have been a little bit more excited coming out in the second half, but you give up points, right? And then they come out and then they get the ball, and then the Packers pretty much have their way. Like where was this? Where was the competitiveness? Where was the where you know where, where was the the, the halftime? You look oh, at shit. oh, oh yeah. we good yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so then you go through and you and, and you look I went back and, and and looked at that Bucks game again, um, it's competitive in the first half right but then the wheels start to fall off and then obviously it wasn't pretty in the first half when you go back and look at it I mean I, I the thing about Justin Fields is like. This guy is really valuable when he gets outside the pocket. I mean, yes, he can do some things inside the pocket, but to consistently move to have this guy just being a statue in the pocket, I really think it takes away from his uh, from his skill set. Hundred yeah. yeah, percent. I mean, Ryan I, I, said that too. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody has said that. Well, funny because well, so I went back and looked at the stats. He had four rushes for three yards. Right. Like, so then I go back and I and I'm wondering, okay, well, why aren't these guys pinning their ears back? At the end of the fourth quarter, when they're trying to go down here and make and 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 and, and uh, tie this game or take the lead, and they're like, "Well, shit." They, I would probably think that you know the Tampa Bay Buccaneers thought that this dude would, might try to run at some point in time, 
and you, you can tell they ran a game down there on the six yard line and and ended up picking that ball off. I mean, I just thought that was I thought that was a tough call in the moment. Uh, I'll be honest with you, but great read by Shaq Barrett. But I put I just, like this. everybody can, knew it was coming. That was the problem. Yeah, do you think they, it was they, a they, good they, had just, they had just did it to the drive before. I, they I, did it I, three I, straight times. A lot yeah, of people I, did not notice three. They did it three straight times. Same exact play. Yeah, I, I just yeah I, I I didn't get that. I didn't get that. But so when you, you were, see that, don't you feel kind of like to the coach, like, wait, run it again? Like, are you serious? Right. Right. Like, you know the blocking scheme. Now you either change left to right or whatever, like you're, or you pull, <laughs> way, you pull that way. But you know they're sitting back waiting on it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's one, what makes that difficult, too, because you just got yards on the previous play, but then you had a, a, you penalty. Had a penalty. That penalty brings you back. So then, you know, they probably thought, Tampa, you know, they're smart over there. They, they're, you know, for years, they've always had a good, solid defense, right? You have two of the best, the you know, linebacker duos. They're very smart. They're very good. They're very fast. These guys know exactly what's coming. They can read uh, the tendencies of linemen or if, if things are happening. That's what Shaq Barrett did. I watched the play about five or six times. He was running a game. The two guys did a good job of really uh, pushing, you know, the linemen back. And Shaq was just able to sit there and just feel the linemen get back out as he tried to get out on the screen and it was it was an easy it was an easy move for him you know i really believe you know that's probably something that uh feels maybe should have saw tried to dump that off too low you know drop dump it off low or something but i just i i understand like i understand the frustration because then you go and you watch fields go score and throw that ball to chase claypool you're like damn it was a beautiful throw man beautiful like a beautiful drive like the drive is beautiful but he's got to get rid of the ball, dude. That first yeah, half, you got you got to get rid of the ball. Yeah, he, rid of the ball. I don't know if it's uh, that damn visors that he keep wearing. Don't wear no more motherfucking visors, Justin. Told him <laughs> to Maybe I know. Hey, <laughs> I know these motherfuckers all about this swag and all this shit. Fuck swag. We need some fucking wins in this motherfucker. Yeah, uh, uh, hey, Jay, I wanted to ask you. Uh, what do you see that the offensive linemen are doing wrong? Um. Man, listen again. I I think that I, I I went and looked at the first half again. I I think you're putting your quarterback in a in a in a position where he can't. He's a dual threat guy, so you have to utilize him as, a, in my opinion, as a dual threat guy. Get this guy on the edge. Give him some call runs. Give keep the defense guessing right. And, and to me, I I feel like you got to put the ball into your running back's hands a little bit more. I mean, you look at our. Uh, uh, Khalil in the first, in the second half. I mean, this guy was getting over five yards of carry. Like, find a way. And, and okay, and it's Vita. It's it's if you got what is it? Vita Vea in the middle. Yeah. You're not. You're down, it, running in between the tackles is dead on Tampa Bay. With that, you got to run outside zone. When you did a good job of pitching it, then you were able to get on the edge. They have smaller. They have smaller backers. You got to use speed to get to the inside linebackers, right? But when you got Vita Vea inside. That inside zone, that power, it's it's like you might yeah, it, you're going to get you're going to get two yards of carry um, at best. So to me, you go back and you look at that drive where they score, where he threw that threw that ball to Claypool. Man, the uh, the the blocking was good, but then you go look at the first half. Three of those sacks. By the time you get to your third run, uh, your your third read, go. I don't care who you have as an yeah. offensive lineman. Somebody's going to give up leakage somewhere. After your second, like these guys are too good. They're too fast, too strong. They're too explosive, right? The 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 best, you know, the help that you can give an offensive line. Listen, I wasn't the best offensive lineman as far as some of the things that some of my weaknesses. But I do know this as a coach and as a coaching staff, when you run the ball, you keep them off balance. Um, you know, let your quarterback be the quarterback he's supposed to be, right? Don't just have this guy living in the pocket. Even though he can do it, don't make him do it over and over. Get this guy on the edges, man. That, that's that's my opinion. That's my yeah. opinion on it. And yeah, I think you... like even like when you're saying like running the game, running the ball, like when they do run the ball, they don't do play actions. Right. Like, they, like when, it, I don't get it. Like I mean, and all of us have been confused the whole preseason. These first two games, the JB fucking all offensive of coordinator, JB fucking all of last year too, but. Yeah. As far as our like offensive coordinator, like the play calling, it doesn't help Justin. Yeah. Like, like give or take, I felt bad for Justin 
last game, not this past game, the game before that, the Packer game, mm-hmm. because he was getting killed. He was getting crushed. They kept him right. in the pocket. They weren't letting him move. But this past game, I, I saw per, a lot of times where he had a lot of a lot of times where he yeah. did not have too much pressure. Right. And still, he was staring down receivers. Yeah. Can't when do he it. was going through progressions, he was just one, two, three, four, five, and then back to one, right. two. Go, dude. Yeah, just you, you got to make a play. You got you got to use your anticipation. You got to make a play. Uh, get the ball out your hands. Um, if you don't have it on the first two, man. I yeah, mean, but, one time, but, one time he ran right into, like, ran right up the right, middle, right yeah, into the I, sack. I, I like, man, was, like, like, peel, peel yeah, it off to the right. Wide open outside. Yeah, you just peel that off to the right. You know, what I mean, but again, you keep doing that, you'll you'll be in the same. You'll you'll stall yourself every single time if you don't have a plan for that. Yeah, and I, I want I want your take on these type things too, like with um offensive. I mean, with you being an offensive lineman, and you seen some of these seen obviously, but you see some of these play calls that he's running. Like, not to mention the three straight screens in a row, which makes no sense whatsoever. But then, like, go back to the Packer game. What, what the hell is this? Yeah. What the fuck is that? Yeah, that's a. <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> That's what like, that is. And JB, love you. You sent me another one that made me say it. Like, this is the last week. What yeah. the fuck is that? One, two, three, four, all within the same spots almost. And that's DJ Moore and Chase Claypool doing the exact same route at the yeah, lower same half. Exact route. Yeah, yeah, wow. Like, yeah, I mean, as, it, as it's like all... an offensive lineman, when you're trying to block and you're seeing play calls like this happen, like, what else can you guys do? I mean, <laughs> Listen, it's it's hard enough up there on that line, right? But it, it's it's a it's a collective, dude. Like this is uh, it's it's all eleven, you know. It's 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 the receivers being where they're supposed to be, to obviously receivers, tight ends being where they're supposed to be, uh, releasing where you're supposed to release, uh, running backs making sure that you're picking up, uh, you know, blockers and making sure that you're doing your correct scans, mm-hmm. and the quarterback knowing. Hey, my line's going to this guy, four and this guy, the, the running back's going to this way. Every these if somebody else comes, that's on me. Like having that understanding, right? Like you, you're gonna live and die by the quarterback position. Again, like that's why I have such an appreciation of my first of my early years being around Sean, being around Drew, and just seeing how these guys operated. You know, and if something didn't work in practice or the running back went the wrong way. If his eyes went the went to the left and they know he should have been right, we're starting it over. We're making sure that we're doing it because, you know, these are the types of mistakes that every defensive coordinator are going to want to see. They're going to want to – they're going to see uh, if you're able to pick up the blitz, if you're able to do things, or if you're able to make the corrections on the fly. If you're not, they're going to – you know, God knows the schemes they're going to try to come up with to mix you guys up up front. So if it, if it doesn't get corrected now – then you know you're going to have the same conversation more and more, and then you're going to have way better competition coming <laughs> coming up. But Bush, doesn't that kind of put you all in the in a catch twenty two? Because the first thing, obviously, is you like, damn, y'all, you ain't throwing the ball yet. That's right. One. But right. then two, because of the play calling and they sitting back waiting, like you can't get to the second level in the running game because they stack and waiting for Justin. Then right. the pass protection is like he didn't throw the ball, or hell, where is he going? Right, like people aren't in the right spots. You know, like that's the, that's you know, how would you feel as a quarterback if your first read or your second read or or or, or you're looking to one side of the field and they're not doing the right thing, right? So then you're automatically in panic mode if like you like those two clips you you had just showed. Like if if you already look out there and see and your receivers aren't right, then then it to me it's just a trickle down effect, right? If you don't get this if you don't get this stuff right, especially when you got a young guy up front, so. Um, I don't know. I, I the guy is just so talented. I remember how much uh, how, how much success he was kind of having at the end of last year. People are really excited. He had a lot to prove going out this year. So I'm hoping that they can find a way to pick this up because I like the kid. I like the talent. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know what was so crazy? We were talking about the running backs. Mm-hmm. And tell me what you think about this. Not one of Chicago Bears running backs, and this might go. This might be on the coach. It could be on the offensive coordinator as well. Not one of the Chicago running backs this year. Has over ten carries in a game, That's not one. Insane. In either game, and yeah. no game, not one of them. Either it's one of these games. So I don't yeah, know if they're no. doing doing. First of all, we all know that rhythm is a very true thing in football. 
Oh, so yeah. the running backs don't have a rhythm. Your quarterback don't have a fucking rhythm. Then, the your offense, line, then your offense don't have a rhythm. Exactly. So they need to do something as far as picking a particular running back, whether it be Khalil Herbert, Dante Freeman, or the rookie Roshan Johnson, mm -hmm. and have them be the bell cow everybody else fills in. Move the pocket a little bit. Do something. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny. Uh, it's funny you say that because I remember my first couple years in New Orleans. I remember in 09, we had man, we had a stable of like three running backs, and we could call on all those. We could call the, on all those running backs to do whatever, whatever was needed. You know, we had Pierre Thomas. We had Reg. It's crazy. We had Pierre Thomas. We had Reggie Bush. We had Mike Bell. Um, um, and and. Yeah, so so like some of those guys could do all three. Some of those guys really could do, be better at, at gap schemes and screens, and so you know that was all part of the that was all part of the game plan. Now, did it did it maybe you know pigeonhole us a little bit and, and, and put us in a position where like okay, if 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 Reggie's in, it's going to be these set of plays. But at the end of the day, man, we caught people off guard. You had no clue what was coming. Like that's who we were to our core. Like we had a plan, like first down, second down, we get this many yards, then it opens up this. And I know every offensive coordinator probably thinks that way, but like mm -hmm. when we get out there, you can't keep putting fields in positions or the offense in a position where it's second and long, or then you get these holdings or these false starts. When you continue to shoot yourself in the foot with this type of offense, uh, that's it's never going to be pretty when you're in, in second and 17 or second and 13, third and 12. The offense isn't built like, you know, it isn't built for that. Yeah, Alex Brown came straight out and said that. He was like, guess what, people? There's not a play in the playbook for those plays. No, no, no. And then, and then again, when I seen Fields do it in the fourth to put this, put, you know, to, to dig into the lead, he made those plays. And I'm like, damn, this kid can do it. But to rely on that, it's hard, man. That's That's just not – you know, this ain't Peyton Manning or Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers you got back here. It's Justin Fields. This is a guy who can get it done in the air when it's right. He can get it done on his feet, too. So the thing that really surprised me, I had to go back and look at it. This dude had four carries for three yards. Now, whether he was scrambling or doing whatever, like, that's not how Chicago and Justin Fields is going to have success. That not was last game, right? Yeah, that was that was just his last game. And then I think the first game he only had fucking two carries. I don't even think for this entire year he has fifteen yards. Period. Rushing. No, that's crazy. No, and that's, that's fucking we, ridiculous. That's crazy. We all came out and said we don't want him to run like he did last year. We we don't want that because it's very hard to make it through a full season like that. Right. But you need to run it to keep it in his arsenal. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. You you you, you can run him six to eight six to eight good times a game where you really scheme it out and be like, okay, this is the look we got. Or, you know, they've showed us uh, when we play this offense, this, this is the defensive look we get. So maybe this is an opportunity to send this man on a draw or get this guy out on the edge. Um, yeah, man. So like, like I said, making him, making this quarterback one dimensional, you're making your offense one dimensional we and, don't want that, and really. you're going to be very predictable. You don't want to be very predictable in this league because that's when these defensive coordinators would be like, you know what? you're going to have to run because we're not going to let you do this or do that. You know, like, these dudes are smart. They get paid a lot of money to scheme these guys up. So they got to get it turned around ASAP. Oh, so let so me so ask you this. How long – this is the million-dollar question. How long before you as a player lose his faith <laughs> in what the coach is doing? Or how long does it take before you realize, hey, they don't know what they're doing? Well <clears> – <throat> I, 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 I've always, you know, I, I try to give the coaches the benefit of the doubt, you know, but if things aren't working, you know, the, it, that, that's a conversation that has to be had because, you know, as players, you know, they might see things, but we feel things and we see things and we feel things a different way. Hey, this inside zone ain't working versus Vita Vita, Vita Vea, whatever his name is right now. Yo, call, call that stretch play, you know, call that toss you, you did with, 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 uh, with Herbert. Like call that call that kind of stuff. Like start giving these recommendations. You know what I'm saying? As a player, you you, you don't want to look to me. You know, I, I I was a guy. Hey, you call it, I haul it type of guy. Like if that's what you want to do, this is what we're going to do. I'm gonna give you my feedback, what I feel like we should be doing. Mm -hmm. But some guys don't. You know, they don't take to it like that. <laughs> like Jay Cutler. 
Yeah, hey, listen. I, I, well, I, always I, remember that famous <laughs> clip. Always remember that famous clip that I said to Mike Mark. Tell him I said, fuck you. Hey, Everybody listen. remembers that clip. Well, listen, hey. Because it's hard. Listen, we might get paid this money. We might do this. But at the end of the day, we – I love – to win, I love to win games. Like, there's no better feeling. There's no better feeling in the world than to win a game. You know what I'm saying? So, I find you can be for like, listen. I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm a pretty mild mannered person. You know how you feel, how you see me now is how I pretty much am. But when you put that helmet on, you get between them lines. You know, something else comes out of you. Uh, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're almost at yeah. a full year since we've won a freaking game. Man, I wish we are getting I had a win so 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 full get no calendar year before right. we have won a game. Yeah, yeah I mean, tough. I mean, tell you the truth, shit. If we're gonna if have anyone a, out there, if there are any therapists in any uh, other fucking city in the world, you know, come <laughs> to Chicago. We got plenty of motherfuckers lined up for you, goddamn. We fucked out here, oh, shit. God. Whole goddamn city gonna need therapy in a fucking minute. Uh, oh, hey, Jay. Are, we just, need, uh, are we gonna need therapy after this week too? And the Sunday, it, it don't get it, like I said. It don't get no easier. It don't hey, get no Christian easy. Jones is back too. Let's not forget that one. Yeah, yeah and he got gonna, fresh legs. Yeah, I think we're gonna need. Hopefully, that it's out of shape, weird. fresh legs. <laughs> uh, no, you, you, didn't, you didn't see him yesterday. I mean, yeah. I'm just hoping. All right, you gotta have faith. <laughs> and, and, and somebody named somebody that, that will remain nameless is pissed off, and that doesn't play well for us either. No. Uh, I don't give a fuck. Fuck him. Somebody hit his ass. Shit. Who is he? Is he? I don't know. Hey, I will what? say this: you know, our defensive front put pressure on the quarterback. On Saturday. goddamn, oh, yeah. they can't tackle. That was that was, that was, <laughs> that was the thing. We literally had that. nine possible that's, sacks. All that's nine funny. You, that's back. funny you say that because that was. Uh, I was just writing notes. I was looking at the game a couple hours ago again, and I said. Uh, they did a good job of getting to Baker, but Baker, like, I feel like his last name could have been Houdini because the way yeah. he got out of that shit, yeah. and, then he, and then he was making was plays. Insane. Like, and again, like, to me, you could point to that and be like, that's yeah, one of the reasons so that we didn't possibly win this game because he yeah. was converting third and tens and other, you know, when he was wrapped, he was wrapped up. That's the thing that got me. It's like you have these opportunities, you know, I, and to me, those are self inflicted wounds. You know, you yeah. know, you can go and, uh, it's not a penalty, but it's an opportunity yeah. for you to, yeah. you know, help your team out. I yeah, because a Gakwe can have about four fucking sacks four right times, now. Yeah, he had four times where he could have freaking got Baker. Like, he was like yeah. John Elway. Well, the one he time Baker like just was John like, Elway. He was slippery yeah. as hell. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think I think we were so excited we were getting to the quarterback we forgot how to tackle. Him. <laughs> oh yeah, shit, I'm here. <laughs> if we were playing two hand touch man or flag football, we might have been in good shape. <laughs> I was going to ask you, Jay. Yeah. Now, by you watching the film, we know that some of the all time great quarterbacks, the Aaron Rodgers, the Drew Brees, the um, fucking Pat Mahomes, all these great quarterbacks, when they get to the line of scrimmage and they see some shit and they identify it. They're allowed to audible out of that shit. Oh, yeah. By looking at this game film, Don't do you like think Justin they're Fields. allowing Justin Fields to do that? Or is it just uh, run my motherfucking play? I don't give a fuck if they know what's coming. Run. Yeah, so the way the way those plays are probably structured, some of those plays probably have uh, opposites, and some of those plays probably have kill plays, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, again... I'm very spoiled, right? So I, I came from a system where uh, it's funny because I remember Garza when I first got to Chicago. He told me, "Hey, listen, like this, you know, this you, it, Drew Brees ain't making the mics here. Like, I, you know, he makes the mic calls. Like, I didn't even know in the league that the centers made the mic calls mm -hmm. on every play. Obviously, when I was in New Orleans, like our center would say it, but Drew would come up and he and he's the final say. So, mm -hmm. if we're in a third down situation." You know, the way he was able to see where blitzes were coming from, just based off of uh, this safety's two steps down, uh, this linebacker's right out of position somewhere. So most of the time, you Mike, you identify the middle of the three, uh, you know, in whatever play you're running. But, you know, Drew would sometimes Mike the outside linebacker. He might Mike the corner if, if he feels like in certain situations – in certain formations, the corners come in. I mean, I, I got to actually got a really wild story for you. Um, it's 2011, 
and we're playing the Detroit Lions in the dome. I want to say it was Thanksgiving, and we're running a a, a, a gap scheme run, um, pull pull, and I pull around. Um, and when I was supposed to pull, my my eyes are supposed to go to the corner, because if the corner blitzes, I need to take him instead of going to the linebacker. Uh, I missed it, right? TFL, I get chewed out in the meeting the next the next time. We play the Lions again in the playoffs. We're backed up on our five yard line, and in the middle of the cadence, he's going through the cadence. Drew is, you mm-hmm. see, he's like blue eighty, blue eighty. He leans over and says, Bush, watch the corner. And I just looked up, I peeked up, and I pulled around. Like, that's the type of – and I went – pull. I, I picked up, picked the blitz and corner up because he came again. It was the same formation. So, like, that's the type of guy that he's putting that type of work in. He can alert me when I was already cognizant to it anyway because I'd already, already got beat on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the kind of guy we play – you know, that's the kind of quarterback that – you know, your Drews, your 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 Peyton Manning was unbelievable at it. Tom, Aaron Rodgers, all those guys, they have full control of the offense. They know exactly what's happening. They know exactly where the receivers are going to be, where the tight ends going to be, who's blocking what, 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 what way you're blocking things. And if I have to make a if I have to drift to a side, I would know I would I would drift away from pressure. You know, that that's just how cerebral those guys were. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So do we do we think that Justin just doesn't have that that up there? Or? I, I I don't I don't honestly I don't know I'm not in the huddle with him, but I, I guarantee I'm, I'm sure that he does it to some extent. Um, but you know you know the 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 maturation and the development of, of those quarterbacks and it's really the relationship you have, right? What what information are you getting fed? What keys are you getting fed? You know, like are you are you sitting? down with the OC and the head coach and your quarterback coach to figure out, you know, what works best uh, in all these situations, which I know all of them do, but then there's certain things that you look out for, you know, um, how, how are you giving yourself an advantage? So when I would see, you know, my older linemen doing things like that, film study, film review, you know, that was really big for me because whenever I could get a pickup on if a, D- a defensive end was dropping so I could go back in and, and 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 pick up help pick up the blitz or the loop and DN because my guy dropped. Like if I can give myself any kind of advantage, I'm going to do that. So you know, I just think at any position, it's like how how are you finding ways to give yourself an advantage to win? Yeah, I feel Justin just needs a big game with a lot of confidence and a rhythm because for sure, for the first time at least I've seen so far this year is he's starting to stare down routes when he's struggling. Yeah. Like he goes through his progressions at first when that's not working, he stares down one route and, and corners and linebackers are too good in this league nowadays. Yeah. They read your eyes and they will get you every time. I mean, I wonder, I'm wondering if he's being told at this point, like to, to not even scramble, you know, because like I said, he's some surprised. that's what I'm some, afraid of. Some, some, because some, some, like I said, some of the clips I saw, he's he's just standing there, he's standing he's there, hesitating. And I, yeah, yeah. And, and I, to me, it's like, hey, if that, if that second read, hey, if that third read isn't there right now, you're ready to throw, dude. Let's let's find an avenue so you can peel out and get your out receivers of got, yeah, and your receivers got to adjust. Jamal, you know, we got two. Sean Frank, we got two clips of just yeah. what you just said, yeah. which is crazy that, we, that because we were thinking about that earlier. Mm-hmm. Now again, remember when I stated you might look back and be like, "Damn, you ain't get rid of the ball yet." This this but, is the this is the inside route right here, and we're we're looking at this, and this was a set play to the running back. And he is wide open. That is a touchdown. He got to throw that. DJ Moore is on the left side, at least six, seven yards off of his off of his back. Where I don't mind seeing DJ in a one on one battle. He doesn't. Uh, go you have, you have, be fine with you that. Have, too. You have two great options. Uh, yeah. You have a touch. You have a touchdown, and then I don't know. And then know, you have the, the far one, so we can see them all. Like there's DJ yeah. up on the top there, wide open. That's a t- I mean, come on. That's a touchdown, and that's a first down. Yeah, you, but you got to throw it, right? Bro, let the ball go. You got to let, let the, the ball, ball go, go like that, right? You just let the ball go, brother. Like, and at the end of the day, and then, you and then to mention you... it, he takes a sack out of all on that play too. Out well, of all what things, if, what does if he he's takes... not seeing it? What if he just ain't seeing? Well, that's it? the problem. Is he needs to see it? That's okay, the he, fucking he, visor. He look, <laughs> look at look at the, the running back right here. Look at the running back right here, though. If you went back to that clip, look at the running. I mean, he's 
He's what like he's open. Like, that's he, that's he's more open. He could easily NFL split open. for a seven eight yard gain right there. Yeah, I mean you, you can't take you just you can't take that set. And then obviously you know then it, it trickles back on the line and then the, and the court in the line isn't doing their job. You know, but like at the end of the day, it's we all <laughs> we all in this shit together. So it's rough. But see, That's I have tough. more problems with those plays because it's like when you have the good protection and when you have the good route combination, because if you look at that last clip, that was only a three-man rush. Right. That's a quick, hey, bam, he found a, a spot in the zone. Let it go. That is more than NFL open yeah. right there. See, He's and, then, and even with this, too, you know, uh, as, a, as a lineman, right, you, you always know in this situation right here, uh, it's a three-man rush. Whatever way the protection is called, that's where you know your double team is going. Mm -hmm. So if this, if this, I don't know the number system, but if this say this was a 52 protection, this is an empty protection, 52, two is to the right, then that means the right guard. So you know they're they're miking uh the this look like the Levante David up here to the top right. So they're probably miking him, eyes are on him. Right, the left tackle is the one who has the the bitch of a job right here. You're the one who has the one on one in a in a protection that's going to take forever, right? So as your quarterback, you got to know, man, my two guys on the right, like nothing's going to get by them. I have confidence that they're going to be just fine. So if I got to peel out to a side, that's the side I'm gonna peel out to. Yeah, you feel me? I'm not gonna peel back out to the left where the one on one is. Mm -hmm. You know that that's just you know really getting into your your quarterback bag even more. So then that makes me wonder, is that being is is Andrew Janoco, is he really teaching him that as a quarterback's coach? Because I mean, it looks just from the fit from the film, it looks like Justin is looking right at him. Yeah, it, 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 I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You get hit. And I don't know how those quarterback minds are. If you get hit a few times, chase up that pocket, you know, it, it might it might flip or so. I don't I don't know again. But you got to you got to take those opportunities when they're there. Right. Yeah, but before we let you go, I wanted to ask you one more thing, too, because this is something mm -hmm. that we always argue about on the show. We all agree on, but argue mm -hmm. about if you have a struggling offensive line and you still want to pass the ball. I mean, you want to run, you want to pass, you want to move it. Why don't they call slant plays? Like, I, I, don't, I don't get it. The Bears literally through two games this year have ran two slant plays mm -hmm. all of last year. Seven. I, I would think with a guy like Justin Fields, you would you would mix in. I, and maybe I'm not, you know, maybe I'm not just paying attention. But like, where's the where's the RPOs at? Those two, yeah. Well, like he, like he, they tried, but he he's not reading it right. Okay. They well, they tried it a couple times, and it's like the Lucas Van Ness play. That was an RPO. Yeah. He should have left. He should have left. Back Lucas right. knew he was get, keeping it. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah, so what, what the question again? I'm sorry, I kind of um, why here. why when you have a struggling offensive line in the pass play, do you yeah. not like Drew Brees is known for this one, two, three hit a guy on a slant, especially yeah, listen, that's it's a it's a three like step pro. and DJ Moore. So what what that does it that's a confidence builder, right? Like when yeah. when you go and you get your first fifteen, like every game we're getting our first fifteen, we're getting our first fifteen plays, and we know exactly. And so me, for me, when I get that first 15, I'm like, okay, I know the mindset of the coach, right? If I see out of those first 15 plays, you got 11 pass, we're going, we finna air it out. Like, that's how you feel. You feel like we need to air it out to open it up for the run. Uh, the way you, you gain confidence or you build confidence in your offensive line is being, is by being balanced, right? It's not about always doing five or seven steps. Like you were saying, mixing in three steps, like Sean Payton was really, he was he was he was heavy on that. He understood. Listen, the pass rush is the pass rush, and in my younger days, I needed some confidence boost, right? So like throwing in that, throwing in that three step in that first drive is nice. You know, sometimes getting that, you know, especially if you got a young tackle, or young tackles, getting that chip. If you don't like the tight end chip on the edge, that doesn't just help the tackle. It helps the inside of the line too, because if you set the line properly, right? If you get a chip. And as a tackle, and if you're jumping out, it, that's your fault, right? You are able to firm everything up in the middle, get the chip, get the help. If you don't get a tight end chip, maybe get a running back chip. If you do it early in the game, you have that defender thinking, oh, man, like, what's this guy lining up doing here? You know, what, what, what's he? why is he lining up so tight to me as a defender? And then now you're able to play mind games, right? Now you're able to do more as an offensive lineman. 
Um, if you're if you're an offensive lineman and you're taking the same exact set every single play, you're going to get beat. I don't care who you are. Go look at go look at Bakhtiari. Go look at Trent Williams. Uh, as great as those guys are, they're not going to vertical set every single every single play. They're going to forty five set you. When Trent was in his younger days, he I would jump set you. I hate to get it bull rush. So I'm trying I'm trying to get on you as fast as I can if the opportunity is right. Mm. So, you know, that's how you build confidence in offensive linemen. That's how you build confidence in your offense, right? It gives you the confidence that saying, hey, I can call this play and I can move the ball down the field. I don't have to try to hit a home run. I don't need a first down every play. But I need four or five yards on first down. I can't be second and 12, second and 13, second and nine every single drive. Because in what position does that put you in? One, you're predictable as hell. Two, you're going to pass it pretty much every single time out of the situation. Yeah. You can't you can't open the playbook up. Yeah, you know what's so crazy? Um, I think within what the last two years, last season and this year, I think the Chicago Bears actually lead the NFL in first drive scoring because really? they yeah because yeah. they came out they came out yeah, since they got rid of Nagy. That's one positive thing. Yeah, that like that, that first drive they fucking put points on the board, and then it's like after that. After those scripted plays, it. as you guys know, after that shit, it just goes to fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, again, that's a that's a that's a mindset thing. You know, that's probably the hardest drive to score on mm-hmm. is the first drive. Well, they had we no fucking worst. problem doing it. We were one of the worst in NFL when Nagy was the coach, and now we were Word. one of the best when Getsy was the coach. Like, yeah. So, Jabron, we know that you got a uh, you you got a schedule. And uh, you you have to get out of here. But before you get out of here, we got to ask you this. We ask everybody this that comes on the podcast. When you spent time here in Chicago, where did you get your fried chicken at? Harold's. <laughs> I don't think anybody has not said Harold's. We got to say something else. There it is. There's never been somebody there who's is. not said Harold's. And easy, too. Oh, I'm t- I, like, well, I, I didn't live in the city, but I lived, uh, I lived like 40. So I, I, didn't, I didn't come to the city that much. But when we did, our team hotel used to be, uh, what was it, the Hilton? Yeah, it used to be the Hilton, I believe. Yeah, and Harold's was right behind it. And it was like literally right behind it. So it's like, all right, that's where I would go get my fried chicken fix. Yeah, yeah. What about your pizza? I was a Lou Malnati's guy. Hmm. Oh, man. It's always 50 50. Great beat. You ain't really? got one. It's always 50 50. You, you the one stuck on Giordano's, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. That Lou Malnati used to. That, it was fire. Back Lou was cool, man. But the, the Lou, crust is like gravel, though. It's like know, man. cornmeal crust. Some people like gravel. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, it is I, what it I is. Guess. <laughs> <laughs> What's your prediction for the for the uh, game on Sunday? You want me to? You want me to? You want me to keep it real? Hey, Please, we're, we're always honest. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. Hey, hey what Mister T is saying, Rocky? Pain. <laughs> Pain. Uh, listen, they're playing in Kansas City. Uh, unfortunately, I, 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 I'm not. I can't give the Bears this one. I just, I can't. Unfortunately, I can't do it. I want them to win. You think I don't want them to go to Arrowhead and? and, and and beat Pat and beat Patty Mahomes. Absolutely, it'd be a huge statement game. Uh, I think it's just going. It's going to be tough sledding. I mean, it's, it's the it's the Chiefs, and we got to be able to get it together. Um, yeah. Of course, I want them to win, but it's you're would, going into. Kansas I would give City. us no chance if even if it was in Chicago, let alone if it being an Arrowhead. So, <laughs> man, they got they got they, you know home field got to be a place where you just you just you feel like you're going to get that W every single time, man. Come on. We got to get we we got to get these W's at home. We have to. We have to. But, so, no, that pretty much is. to you. There's pretty much no chance or very slim chance that the Bears. Uh, I, I, I won't say no chance, you know, because I've been Can in games. Where I've been. Yeah, listen, dude, I've been in games where I'm like, shit, we finna blow these guys out. Next thing you know, I pick six. Some wild shit, you know, something wild happens in in the special team side of things. So. I'll never say never, uh, you know. But if I was betting with my wallet, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try to save. I'm gonna try to make a little money. But at the end of the day, it's gonna be t- it's gonna be tough. For real. I'm just keeping. I'm just gonna keep it a buck. <laughs> hey, that's what we do. <laughs> I'm just gonna True. keep it a buck. 
If they win, shit, I'll be shouting it from the mountaintops. Bro. As, as, much as, 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 as much as the Bears piss us off as fans, man, we're still every man, day. Man, we will meet you at the mountaintop. Right. Come on with it. Come we on with it. We will meet you up there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not climbing that motherfucker. I'm taking a helicopter. Up there. Hey, listen, they, they went they went out by the helicopter. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to get you back, though, man. Sometime during the season, we got to get you back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We can, uh, what's it, September? Yeah, let's 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 uh, shoot for some time in October, man. After okay. the next let couple of days. Let us know your podcast again so we can all, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we can, all our people can watch Bush it. And, uh, Bush and Me Show. Bush and Me Show, yeah. That YouTube? Uh, it's on. Uh, no, nah, we just we just have it right now on Spotify and every other place you can watch. Um, oh, it's the audio. Yeah, it's the audio. Yeah, we're, we're gonna okay. uh, we're, we're, we'll start doing a couple more things on the video side. My my guy is in Maryland though. He's like I said, he's he's good on the gambling side. He talks his talk, comes through with the stats. So I think y'all y'all would enjoy it. And I'll be talking Bears ball on there too. So listen, I might have to have one of y'all on just to talk Bears, man. We got to do it. Oh, yeah. anyone, man. Anytime you need. Definitely it. do it. It man. ain't uh <laughs> I'll talk Blackhawks too if you want to. It talk. ain't family yeah. appropriate because you can't have me on there. I cuss too damn much. Yeah. I have to get one of them sensor buttons for yeah. you. <laughs> I always wanted to get that. We really do gotta get that in here. <laughs> yeah, that might that might be a that might be a nice little mix up to, to have on there. That'd be dope. <laughs> no, absolutely no. I'll, I'll come on, I'll come on again next month, man. I had a good time talking. Okay. Yes, sir, cool, brother. Cool. All right, well, we definitely will be in touch then, man. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Thank listen, for, for the for the mental health of, of, of Bear fans, I do want that W this weekend. So let's yeah, let's get after yeah. it, man. Please. We wanted, we wanted it the last two weeks, too. Come on, Justin. <laughs> take off that fucking visor, man. Please. Hey, if he takes off the visor and then go rocks out a 400-yard game. Man, that, that motherfucker out there throwing like Stevie Wonder, God damn it. Throw that motherfucker <laughs> off. Take it off, please. God damn. Try something, dude. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you, Jay. Hey, appreciate man, you, absolutely. Jay. Y'all be good, man. I appreciate you. All, All right, right, man. Bro. Yep. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, great guest there. That mod is awesome, man. He's a fun dude. Yeah. Fun dude. Can somebody in the chat good. send us a picture of Justin Fields without a visor on so we can get a visual of Shit, that. When one. the fuck was the last time he wore one? I don't know if he's ever had. <laughs> That's the question. Georgia. High school, maybe? Maybe high school? Shit, I don't know. I know that motherfucker fogged up on Sunday because I saw him wiping the fucking fog off that son bitch. So don't wear that shit. Yeah, that makes sense actually. Come on, Jay, man. Shit, fucking kidding. It it was great to have an offensive lineman on here. That was that, and one that actually played with a quarterback that got rid of the ball quickly. Like that's one of the biggest things I want to know. How how is it blocking for a quarterback that will drop? Take his three step drop balls out of there versus playing with the quarterback who takes his drop and it just sits back there. I mean, and they got a block for all this time. Usually, you only want a blocker to hold his block for like maybe a second or two. Man. I mean, like I said, the, the thing that I sent you guys earlier about uh, when I was watching, uh, I think it may have been 670 to score, and they had, I don't know. What's his name? Tim Jennings? Uh, where the fuck is yeah, yeah. yeah, he was on there, and he was just talking about how Justin is naturally used to putting his left foot back, but now they're going to change it up and have him put his right foot back when he takes his first step back. And then he said that a lot of times that can throw off your rhythm as far as being able to see the field because you'll get back to that. He said it's not about him not going through his progressions. Cause they say he's going through his progressions. He just may be going through his progressions too damn fast instead of waiting for that plate or that uh, receiver to get open. So I don't know, man. I hope it's something. Just fucking send that something. over to Flutes. Yeah, oh, shit. Send it over to Getsy yeah. ass because Flutes go like foul. he don't want to make a move on that son bitch. There you oh, go, the high, school, no high visor. school. I got you. High school, no visor. Jesus Christ, you need to go back to high school. Then it still looks the same. God damn. So lucky. what we good. what we want to do before we uh. You want to before hit up a commercial fan, before, before we do the fans? Pay some bills. Pay some bills. Sound off. Off. Relax. Pay before it. we do the fan sound off, we want to get into some post-it notes. And we also got a keeping it a stack. Uh, but, yeah, Frank is right. We're going to pay some bills. I, I actually have some real bills. 
but I'm I'm not I'm not gonna pay those. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not yeah, I still haven't pay. paid my parking ticket from Huey, man. Yeah, you, gotta pay that you got a parking ticket yeah. in Huey. Yeah. It's because oh, I didn't I didn't see any meter thing out there. So that was I did point. too, actually. I got a parking ticket too. But I don't need to take any more of our money. So let's go ahead and pay these fake bills. Listen, shout out to my man Terrence from Chicago's Clubhouse Podcast from the Moore's Brewing Company here in Chicago, Illinois. All right, we got bros out here putting out this for the Moors. It's tasty. I didn't even have to come on here and lie about this. All right, this this tastes like what I like when I drink a beer. I don't drink a beer often because I'm too big and I need to stay off of carbonated drinks. But this is the carbonated drink you need to open up and crack and take a sip. All right, if you want to come out of the dark ages, be educated. All right, get you some of this Moors brew right here. It's definitely tasty. You can get it in Kimbark and High Park. Whoa, 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 whoa. I thought we were a team. Where's mines? And when are we getting in Tempe, Arizona? I guess we're going to have to find out, man. But everybody out there, for here from Chicago, go to Ken Bark and pick you up some more. There was a time... What the hell happened? Yeah, I didn't touch it. There was a time when high standards prevailed, when excellent craftsmanship was displayed and treated with the utmost importance. Acquire the crisp, refreshing taste of Moore's Beer. Moore's Beer. Raise your standards. Now he gone. <laughs> of course he did. You know that little piss ain't gotta go take a piss. Ah, <laughs> that weak bladder. Yeah, well, I, I, did. I didn't. I didn't go take a piss this time. I, I actually went to go look for a Morris beer. Yeah, I, I still don't. We don't believe you. <laughs> That's all right. So we want to get into these segments before we bring in our fans, the Bears fans. Uh, fellow Bears fans, they got a lot of shit to say. They in the back. They ready to go. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get these segments out of the way first. Starting with this one. Posted. I posted the other day. And oh my God, everybody they mama answered. <laughs> everybody they mama had well, something to say people. about this. A lot of people had something to say about this question that I posted. So this is what I posted. So are y'all done with Justin? Let me read some of the responses that we got from that. So, one person said, fire everyone. Faz. <laughs> yeah. Faz <Fires laughs> definitely said Fires didn't that. hold back. That's for sure. Fire King everyone. Lou Rivera said, absolutely, I'm done with fields. My, my opinion, our line is not all that, but there were times he had four to five seconds in the pocket. It didn't do shit. He's not wrong there. No, he's not. He's not. Sam Bolo. He said, no, nah, I'm not done with him. He can still be that dude. So, I mean, I guess there's there's like mixed opinions. Some, some on the bandwagon still. Some like, nah, fuck that dude, man. JL Wright. He said, no, nah, I'm not done with him, but definitely the OC and the head, head coach. So JB, he, he on your he on your train. Uh, so yeah, there were a lot of people that that say yay, I'm done with them. Then there were some people that say nay, I'm not done with them. Now, so I'm gonna ask you all in like a few words: Are you done with Justin Fields? 
Start with a foul mouth. Oh, fuck, I always got to go first. You never go first. <laughs> I always have to go first. Yeah, that's because I always got a bitch about me going first because some bitch always picks me <laughs> going first. God <laughs> damn. Nah, but I'll go first. Uh, am I done with them? Absolutely not. Uh, like I said, it's two weeks into the season. I'm not done with them. It sort of reminds me of Top Gun a little bit. You know, remember in Top Gun when Maverick wasn't the same, when Goose died? You know, he said, I'll fire when I'm good and goddamn ready. That was before my time. I don't know shit. Get the that. fuck out of here. That was before your time. <laughs> you don't fuck with Top Gun. Right. Who the fuck doesn't know Top Gun anyway? Um, so, yeah. So, I think right now I'm not done with Justin. I hope he takes those fucking visors off. I hope he just sits up there and just fires the fucking ball. But more importantly, get his confidence back. Because it doesn't matter if he is fine. If he doesn't have confidence in himself, all oh, this is for shit any goddamn way. So he has to get that confidence back. But a lot of that's going to depend on that whack ass OC of ours. And I'm done. Frank. Am I done with him? No. Um, this was probably the first game that I can think of where I said, Justin, you fucked up and you fucked up a lot. Like, but the fact that you're saying two years into a new system, not even two years, a, a year and two games into a new system, that you're going to say you're done with them? No, there's absolutely no shot that I'm done with them. But I think I'm on everybody's train with this one. Getsy, you need to get your freaking head out of your ass and let the handcuffs off Justin and let him do what the fuck he wants. Let him run the offense. All right. All right. Shit. I kind of I, I kind of concur, but I'm going to save my commentary until afterwards. JB, what's on your mind, bro? So the short answer is no, I'm not done with Justin. <clears throat> not by a long shot for me. But I look at scenarios where you have what happened to Trey Lance, how he kind of got, you know, unceremoniously discarded without really having a chance. Then I look at what Zach Wilson and they just – one year, they knew, hey, he had a, a year to start. We're done with him. We move on. So we can't say that that doesn't happen, right? But anybody that knows football or even thinks they know football, if you can't see that the coaching staff is what's killing this kid more than any line play, they got him in his head. Because when he just says, shut up and pulls his Willie Beeman, he goes right down the field, three straight strikes, touchdown. That's a that's a very good like get Eberflus is um freaking Al Pacino right now, and well we have I don't, really even, I don't even think he's that I just think he's an inept. He, first of all, he was he he was put in a position like like a nepotism hire. He was put in a position that he know he didn't deserve and he should he, he was unprepared to have. All those that said fire Allen Williams, what did Eberflus do? Same shit. Got his uh, it was. I, I felt a lot more comfortable in the defense no, with Ever Flus. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Still no, 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 suck. No, you didn't. You I just, think Grogu just, wants to speak yeah. on it. Grogu is about to fucking kill Grogu, something. Grogu, what do you think because, about? Use that force and blow it. Because head here's off. here's huh? the thing that nobody up here is gonna sit up here and admit. What's that? Matt Eberflus made Baker Mayfield look like the number one draft pick he was. Five four years ago or five years ago. I, don't remember I think all of us would agree to that. Yeah, no. So, so, so I don't want to hear nothing about oh, they're gonna look so much better without Allen Williams. The bottom line is I'm putting some onus back on Ryan Poles. You hired this shit show of an offensive uh coordinator, this 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 unprepared head coach, this this line coach that ain't worth a damn, this quarterback's coach that ain't worth a damn. Get rid of all of them. Hold on, wasn't Eberflus just about hired when Ryan Post came in, but it wasn't official yet? They got the same agent, so they paired them together. Yeah, I think I think Poles wanted Eberflus because of the agent situation, but I think Eberflus or Eberflus brought Getzy and Allen Williams. Eberpus, it's a good one right there. Eberpus or Evil well, fucking bitch. No, so I'll say my piece, even though I kind of said it already. You don't you if you if you say we're done with Justin, I have to question your football IQ. Justin has showed us 
what he's capable of. He showed us that he can play in the NFL and he can be a great quarterback. But his line has been bad. You can't you can't put all the onus on Justin. His line has been bad. The coaching is terrible. It starts it starts with Brian Poles. Even though I like Brian Poles, it starts with him. Oh, well, really? It might start with George McCaskey, but I ain't what, going. What up, Diab's comment? Because I agree with one hundred percent with what Diab's saying. I ain't going that far, but you can't put it all on Justin, and you can't. You well, I mean, I guess you can say that you're done with Justin, but I mean, it's his second year with this terrible ass offensive coordinator. You know, we gave. Miss Trubisky, what four, four or five years? Four years. JB was it four? It was four years, right? They declined his fifth year option. Right. Okay. So, I, I'm not done with Justin. Not, not, not even close. Not even close. He just had a couple bad games, and yeah, he he's not been playing good. But I, I believe he can turn it around if the line turns it around and those coaches get their heads out their fucking asses or they get replaced. Yeah. That's if you're going to have a hits principle, how about you fucking use it? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It looks like it's so far that Alan Williams may be on his way of getting replaced because, once again, he's Evil Fuku, and yeah. it's not, it's not, it, it ain't his fault. <laughs> I mean, I'll put it to you like this. It ain't all his fault, but he does play a part in it because from the minute they said that Allen Williams was going to be the fucking defensive coordinator, I moaned about the shit anyway because Allen Williams has never been a good fucking defensive coordinator or where the fuck he's been at. He's never been productive. He's never done anything extremely well. Um, They just look out of sync. Something has to change. If I'm the head coach... I'm going to find somebody that can sit up there and run this offense because at the end of the day, my job is on the fucking line. So that means I got to get rid of this fucking defensive coordinator and I'll call the plays. I'll do it. Now, we did talk about how the Bears did make the Bucks, well, Baker Mayfield look like a first round draft pick or the number one draft pick. But we also got to remember in that game, there were areas for turnovers. They were there for sacks. Now, I can't blame the coaches. For not bringing the motherfucking players down when they had them, that's on the fucking players. That's not on the coach. Now I can say that the defense did get pressure quite often this game more than they did with motherfucking Allen Williams back there. So I can't completely knock Ibrafus on that. He did get pressure. The players just didn't develop, um, didn't deliver. Like we sit up there said. Your boy in Godway. Godway could be probably leading the NFL in motherfucking sacks right now if he could fucking bring down Baker Mayfield and rap him up. Like eight sacks is missed. They will probably got off the field a couple more times if they sit up there and just stuck through and went all the way through with their tackles, opposed to how many did Jack Sanborn miss? Jack Sanborn had a hell of a year last year. This year, this Man, motherfucker he can't few. he can't tackle shit. But that goes back to what I'm saying about the coaching. This whole his principle and all that. that oh, I agree with you on that. It looks cute on paper. It looks cute in the coach underwear. Is, co- coach is not making your ass wrap up. That's on you. No, so, but what I'm saying. But you got to hold. He's saying you got to hold people accountable for missing these freaking. There you go. Okay. I agree 100 with that. Okay. You got to. Right. So, so look, look. This is what I want to do. We'll get back into. We'll get back into the conversation that we were just having, and we also will get into keeping in the stack. And we got a, a new segment, Game Day Eats. But before we do that, I want to grab my beer. And then we're going to have fans, Bears Let's fans, go. Go. sound off. They've been waiting in the back. They got a lot of shit to say. We're going to get to it, man. But um, I want to get my beer. So can we play another commercial, Frank? Go for it. Hey. You want to get the, the, you get the beer last time? Cause, cause I, I we'll didn't have time right to get it. You just worry about what's going on over there in your household. It hey, I, I got a fucking Dasani water. What? Did he move all these damn commercials? Uh, I'll say. Well, we're gonna have to go ahead while wow, Frank is trying to figure that out right now. Grogo has something to say. Grogo, yes. what did you think Grogo, about what this? Shit? What you think about it? He's he says. He says the culture sucks. Wow, we don't have to do no damn commercial. <laughs> 
Well, damn, dude, we didn't have a commercial. I mean, we asked Grogu what he thought. Grogu said the coaches. Yeah, I, I agree. The co- he said the coaches staff they fucking need to sucks. Use the force. Yeah. They need to use the force. He said he's gonna train Justin Fields in the force. He's gonna teach him to be a Jedi, right? Yeah. Hey, after after Terrence thing. do his thing, I'm, I'm about to heat up what my popcorn. Said. Because oh, let's hear it. Because I'm I'm actually agreeing with what Diab is saying. So go. let me tell you why I don't. For the simple fact, he's running Eberflus' system. He's running the exact same system that Flus ran as a D coordinator in Indianapolis. So when you have one, when you have one that's telling right. you run my system, and you're and you're blaming him like, oh, you can't run my system. You're not good. Then I come and run my system, and I still suck. Is it the coordinator, or is it the coach, or is it the system? But let, let me let no, me ask you this. I, I, I you totally this. don't agree with shit you just no, said. I, I don't agree with that at all either. Because Williams has never been fucking good. This, <laughs> this, this, this oh, is no, the thing. No, hey, hold on. It, That's not true because Warren Sapp said it himself. Aaron Williams knew exactly what he was doing and was a hell of a coach. That don't shit. It's a lot of coaches out there that know what the fuck they're doing and they still ain't fucking good. Nagy knew what he was doing too. No, but the that, thing is, no, with, that's, that's with, with what you're saying, right? and he, I he has had jobs before and his defenses have not been looking good. I don't, I don't give a fuck how much he knows. I don't care what Warren said. I don't give a fuck how much he knew. He had one good year. I don't care. One good year where? One good year where? I'm Either back. Like, he had one good year in Minnesota, and then he had oh. the worst year this, ever. This is the thing. Oh. Eberflus, the difference between what Eberflus did, and they they both lost, so don't get me wrong. They they both sucked at that, but Allen Williams runs Eberflus' system. I agree with you. I do. I agree with you on that one. But it's about adjusting. You don't just run one defensive scheme all the time. All right? When Allen Williams was in there, and he was not able to get pressure – he still did the same shit over and over and over again. Even Flues didn't get system. He was running outside blitzes with the linebackers. He was scheming the defensive linemen. What, what, what he was else moving everybody? Running? And he was putting no, 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 no. What on outside the blitzes was he running? I saw a blitz from Edmonds. Can, can yeah, we can we table this? It got to the quarterback. Unfortunately, it didn't still, fucking take him down. Can we get our can we get, Let's get our, our guys in here. fans in here, please? I'm about to get some popcorn and beer to watch this shit. Go. Uh, I need my man Rick in here. <laughs> hey guys, how we doing? What's up, Rick? What's going on, Rick? <sighs> I need my man, Mr. Chicago. Mr. Chicago. You're still on mute, bud. What what's good, fellas? How y'all living, man? What's up, player? How you we doing, good, man? man? Uh, <laughs> how am I, yeah, I know you got a lot to say. I got a lot of shit to say. Yeah, I know. I, I got know. a lot of shit to say. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you this much. If you think foul mouth got a foul mouth, you ain't met me yet, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Don't, when you come yeah. to this team. Oh, don't shit. get us cut off the air. Oh, We're no, up, no. Yeah. No, no. It, it, listen, it, it won't be too <laughs> vulgar, but uh, it's going to be some foul shit said. You can believe Uh-oh. that shit. Uh-oh. <laughs> So we're uh, trying to get our our moderator, uh, Black Sam, in here, but he, um, I guess maybe he stepped away or something. I don't know. That's my guess, because he, he's not but, on mute. So yeah. So just get uh, him on when he gets. Hey, what's there, up, there gentlemen? Right what's there. good? What's hey, good? Man. Your he phone. just, need, he just needed that invitation. Phone, Is that better? No, uh, <laughs> your screen is supposed to flip. Are you are you still rocking out a flip phone? Uh, I'm on an Android, man. Is it a BlackBerry? <laughs> no, if you, I mean, I know BlackBerry. If you on an Android, if you on an Android, slide on that thing yeah, and you it look like a little lock. Yeah, yeah. Rotate just hit that one. Yeah, rotate the screen. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it should be a rotating screen thing on there. Yeah, it usually comes up on the corner when you move the phone. Man, yeah. you got no kill phone, man. <laughs> no, no, I'm trying to adjust it. It's just it's that, the one that, that looks it's like a, it's in a different chrome. While he's doing that, keep talking. We don't have to stop and pause while he's okay. doing that. So, yeah. So, fellas, Look at JB getting irritated. You got damn right. right. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> and, and let, let's, start, let's start with you, Rick. Yes, sir. What, what did you see on Sunday that you are super pissed off about? Well, I mean, honestly, what didn't I see? The whole freaking game, pretty much, man. You know, 
they played tough in the first half, and then they come out in the second half. Same thing as with Green Bay. Looked like the other team adjusted, and we just kept doing the same shit. And, you know, it's our coaching. They're not putting our players in the best position. And it's also, you know, a well-known fact, this is a super new team. So they really need that coaching to have them in the best position. You know, it's. It was bad. That, we hear it in your voice, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sound like a motherfucker. <laughs> you know I get it. So, I Mr. It. Chicago, Mr. Chicago, I see you ready to go. Go ahead, bro. All right, man. Well, first off, let me say, man, appreciate y'all for having me on the show. I see y'all doing great shit out there, man. We appreciate I'm really, you. I'm, I'm from Chicago, but I live in Atlanta. And ain't, ain't shit in my house say Atlanta on except the goddamn light bill and my driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> now, having said that, I'm in my man cave right now. You see all the Chicago shit behind me. So having said that, what did I see that pissed me the fuck off uh, at this game? Well, this game. I could, I could go back to the first game. Because I thought about going to that game at home. But I know for a fact, I'm telling y'all right now, and I'm dead ass serious about this shit. If I had been at that game at home and seen that shit in person, I'm getting thrown in jail. I'm throwing (laughs) throwing shit. I'm getting disrespectful. And not only that, I ain't going to tell the fans to even point me out. Don't die me out. I'm I'm, I'm raising my hand. I did that shit. Do something. Because you motherfuckers insulted and disgraced the goddamn city of Chicago with that goddamn bullshit ass performance that you call a football game. But let's get to this second week. Woo! Football. Um, so this game, the first drive was perfect. It went totally to shit from there. Now, I've been one to criticize one quarterback many times. Because I don't think he's fucking good. Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield is an arrogant motherfucker who thinks he's better than what he is. And we made this motherfucker not only look serviceable, we made him look like he was a good quarterback. He only incompleted maybe eight or nine passes in this fucking game. Had 300 yards. 300 yards. It could have been more had he actually scored more opportunities in the goddamn red zone when they were down there. But I don't know if I can give credit to my defense for stopping them or an indictment on his ass for not scoring the goddamn football. The ladder. The oh, ladder. I choose the goddamn ladder then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he was almost that. perfect on third down. I just had to point that out. Oh, eight for 15. Oh, eight wow. for fucking 15. Oh, eight for 15. We mm. were six for 13. That mm. was, that looks good only if we actually producing some shit. So yeah. I, I've always, I've been on the mindset of stating one stat that you never see show up on the stat sheet, and that's how many fucking points that we left on the field. How many touchdowns did we leave out there? We left a lot of goddamn points out. Yes. And the fact that we had running backs averaging five, four or five yards a carry, we yeah. led the fucking league in running by committee last year. Now you only going to run a couple of times? You need the running game to open up the goddamn pass to keep defenses honest. <clears throat> These goddamn defenses that we on our schedule, they they know how predictable we are. They know what the fuck we're gonna do before we fucking do it. So you gonna sit up here and tell me that Flus, you claim to be a defensive guru. I ain't see a goddamn goo or a rule. <laughs> <laughs> Not one. We do got uh, Grogu, though. <laughs> yeah. so, so listen to me. So I asked friends, friends of mine who are coach fans who obviously know him from his days of being defense coordinator. So that 4-3 defense worked pretty good over there with them. but And he's made it specifically clear that his 4-3 scheme and his hit defense is predicated on the three-tech. We don't fucking have a three-tech. So why the fuck did we not push hard enough to go get one, i.e., Hardgrave from Philly, who we let San Francisco go get. Like, San Francisco need any more fucking defensive players out there already going with this great-ass defense they already got. We need it, Hardgrave, and we ain't push hard enough to go get him. Well, so is it, is it, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, is, it, is it more about scheme than just the actual talent that they want to add on the Bears? Because I'm going to ask that question by saying, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so that's probably why. You know, they just half-ass spin this year. 
So you sat here and you you put all the pieces around trying to compensate for what yeah. you're lacking on this front four. Because these motherfuckers, you could say we got pressure on Baker, but it resulted to nothing. Briska missed the first goddamn pick of the yeah. fucking game. Yeah. We cannot afford to miss opportunities to turn to get turnovers on these motherfuckers. We, we, don't get. we can't afford that. More, more specifically, we can't afford to not get pressure on the goddamn quarterback, especially ones who ain't fucking good. Baker Mayfield, <laughs> this motherfucker, <laughs> he's not good. I don't give a fuck how good he look against us. I bet he won't do this shit again. I bet he won't look this good again. That's the NFL. That's the so, NFL. In, every Baker week's different. Mayfield. I think a lot more Baker Mayfield was the team, man. Tampa's got a good team. Of course team. it was. Really it was. was. And, and Jordan Love looked like Aaron Rodgers because – Green Bay didn't so that was that. <laughs> Not last week. Did. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Every week they face Listen, better defense. We can get pressure on an unproven quarterback named yeah. fucking Jordan Love. Yeah. We can get pressure on him. Yeah. And we we allow them to just basically do what the fuck they wanted week one. And then week two, we said we were going, okay, week one was probably the, the one game I saw where we – the most screens and checkdowns I've ever seen this goddamn team ever throw a day in my fucking life. Now we were Check bitching. Down and, most of us were bitching and complaining about this mm -hmm. offense not ever really utilizing the goddamn running backs enough in the goddamn offense. Yeah. Hey, do do y'all know out of what 36, 37 passes that Justin uh threw in week one, 95 percent of them three went to more than running 40. backs. Yeah, went to yeah. running backs. <clears throat> Fucking running backs. That that bullshit RPO. I heard y'all mention the RPO that he did with Van Ness running against him. I I don't even consider that a goddamn RPO. That wasn't because there was nobody to even block Van Ness from even coming at him. And then there was no option for Cole Komet ass, who was supposed to be the target to throw to. Him and he didn't uh, even know who the fuck they throw it to. Him and I forgot who it was. Tony hesitated running. Tanya, yeah, they both. Yeah. Each other. I yeah. don't know what's going on if it's just everyone's hesitating or something. I Justin don't hesitated that. on that run. Yeah. He could have beat Van Ness. Now, Van Ness was pretty damn fast off that line, true enough. Yeah. But Justin is faster. I know yeah. goddamn well. And living down here in Atlanta, I can tell y'all, man, I've watched Justin damn near his whole life. I live down the street where he grew up at. There's a pizza place that has a mural of Justin Fields on the side of the wall with a bear jersey on. Took a picture of it on the side of every damn thing because they, they know him down here. I, the opposite direction of me is where Trevor Lawrence grew up at. So they played, they've been playing each other in high school, college the whole nine. Justin, I know how talented he is. But the question that y'all asked prior to us joining, I have to be realistic with you all. And I try to be the most realistic Bears fan you will find. I'm losing my patience with Justin because there are mistakes and stupid shit that Justin is doing that are Justin Fields specific. Correct. Some of the shit, let's be real about this. Some of the shit that he's doing, it's him doing it. It's not the scheme. It's not the coaches because you're still out there on that goddamn field. You still got to execute. So you're telling, but you're telling me though that the one thing that kept us in the games all last year, despite us losing all these motherfucking games, he is now not running. But here's the thing even in Ohio State, he ran second. And he was bombing that bitch down the field. The problem with Justin's vision, though, is that if his first option ain't there, he's fucked. He don't look at other options that's down the fucking field. He's looking at his first read. If that first read ain't there, now he's counting in his goddamn head, saying, where the fuck else can I go? But you're not looking at, he ain't scouting the whole goddamn field. And I need to understand why. Now, one of my friends actually mentioned this, and I thought about this, because you know, NFL players most of the time embellish about their height and weight and shit. You know, whatever. But I don't know if he's tall enough to see over that line. And maybe that could be an issue. Not justifying it, but all pun intended. But maybe he's missing some of these goddamn passes. It's the because they got these, these lineups. It could be the visor too. It could be. It was hot as a motherfucking Tampa. Oh, I know. But yeah, I don't know why the hell you would want to wear a visor in Tampa. That makes no damn sense. When well, you already had a goddamn uh, play on your goddamn team that was dehydrated and fucking passing yeah. the fuck out on the goddamn field, damn near. But, but you yeah. missing opportunities. Here's my prop, my one of my biggest problems about this team, and y'all probably can contest to this. We don't have no real leaders on this fucking team. 
We don't have no true leader. We don't have no rah-rah. I heard Justin and a few other guys saying, well, I'm not really much of a rah-rah. Fuck that. You better be a fucking rah-rah guy. I need you to get somebody's fucking face. I need some fights on the sideline or something because I'm punching somebody in the fucking face. You miss a tackle. You you drop a pass. You miss a block. Something, man. Where's your heart at? Y'all don't even give a fuck. Y'all go on the sideline with your goddamn hands down, moping and sobbing and shit. Y'all just like, you know, I get paid on Thursday anyway. It don't fucking matter. What the fuck? Do, do y'all know how insulting that is to a Chicago Bears? This is Chicago. This ain't I, no fucking I think, small uh, market goddamn team. You know, Carolina Panthers. I think Mr. Chip. Chicago came in here with enough energy for everybody. <laughs> hey, but let me everybody. challenge you on one thing, Mr. Chicago. You, yes, sir. They always say players take on the personality of their head coach. When have you seen your head coach get in somebody's face? When have you seen your head coach be a rah-rah guy? When have you seen your head coach even and, look like he know what the hell he doing? And let's not mention Bushrod just said right. this too. Bushrod yeah. said the same right. thing with Drew yeah. Brees. Drew yeah. Brees wouldn't have been Drew Brees if it wasn't for Sean Payton. They were close. Yeah, they, they were, were always together, working yeah. together, doing everything together. You can say what you want with Tom Brady with Belichick. Would Tom Brady be Tom Brady if he didn't have Belichick? I, I don't think so. That, that, that is true. And you can look at that with Andy Reid and Mahomes, too. They yeah. have a great relationship. Like it is a that rapport, you can't coach that. You can't coach that relationship. That yeah. relationship forms over time. When you know each other, you know the fuck you, your hit and misses are as a coach and as a player, that shit, it gels. It works. Flues. Yeah. Now, here's my other problem with the goddamn Bears organization. We have a knack for hiring motherfuckers who ain't had no goddamn experience in the position yeah, they've been hired in, a, in the first a, fucking place. All the time they do. Going cheap about it. Allen Williams came from India. That's, it's like, that's bullshit nepotism that pisses me the entire fuck off. Damn, I said that earlier. Uh, Luke Getzi ass never called a goddamn play in that goddamn musty ass Aaron Rodgers Wisconsin that City. He, because he because he had Aaron Rodgers, it made him look good. Just like with Hackett bomb ass, who should have never got a goddamn coaching job in Denver, but because you had Aaron Rodgers, uh, that you were, you were basically managing. You weren't even coaching him. You was managing him. That's a that's a tall glass of dirty goddamn bullshit with some goddamn ice in it. It ain't a goddamn straw that you can sell me to suck from. <laughs> this motherfucker, Luke Getzi, he's never right. called. He's never called a play. Before he got here. So we are not in the business of hiring motherfuckers who are underqualified for the mm-hmm. positions they're in. We, we bring them in for cheap apartment. money. We bring them in for cheap money. For bullshit. Yeah, and, and, I, and, I heard, and I heard Bush Look, Rod mention okay. Trestman. Trestman had never I, been I, in, I, in I, Chicago. I, Mr. Chicago. Mr. Chicago. My take bad. a breath. Right. Take a breath. Right. Have a beer. I want to get Black right. Sam in here, man. The moderator, <laughs> Black Sam. Right. Go ahead, man. What's on your mind, Black Sam? You know, I'll just go back to what Mr. Chicago said, you know, and, you know, making two game managers look good as quarterbacks. Just imagine what they're going to make Mahomes look like. I think Mahomes is just going to toy with us. You got to hold that. We ain't going to talk about that just yet. Don't do that. Oh, okay. Okay. We're going to talk about about your your, uh, ire is with the Bears, and then we're going to get to Rick. Okay. Okay. KC talk for a minute. Okay. All right. I, I'm trying I'm trying to be more uh, you know, just bring a little positivity in there because I think missing really? uh really what? Yeah. Oh, 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 real little, quick. I, little. I, have to, I have to interject right now, uh Sam. So I'm gonna tell you this. <laughs> one of one of my favorite quotes that I like to like to reference, uh is a quote that Thanos from uh, the Avengers said to Loki. He say, uh, your optimism is misguided. <laughs> that's what the fuck that is. Duly know, <laughs> duly know. <laughs> what but, hope yeah, we got Grogu, are you breaking? Now it? we got Avengers quotes coming in. We got to get. It, it, but it, you know, it's okay. it's. We all should know it's hard to win in the NFL, and we know a lot of teams that surprisingly are zero two, and we know uh, when you miss preseason and practice, that carries on, and because there's a lot of teams that rest their stars, you can see a lot of week one, yeah. like you know. Stinkers. I mean, it Bengals Blake didn't say that in an interview. Yeah, Blake so it's kind of like you know, interview. I'm not saying that the Bears say, "Oh, we shouldn't feel bad." I mean, the Giants, I mean, put up a fucking donut on opening night. That was so, so bad, and they had a big spending off season, and, and they came back against a Cardinals team. Of course, it had to take them all the way to the second half to to 
to beat the Cardinals, which is a tanking team. So you, you never know. It's any given Sunday. He's going to have a lot of spoilers. Uh, it's a long season because a lot of things could factor in. A lot of things. Uh, that's that's my that's my take on it because I don't think the Bears. I mean, if we look at their schedule, we got to see what they match up against. Because you know, Mahomes. I guess we could just predict that it's zero and three. I just want to see what kind of effort they put in that game. I, I, I cut my four. light off because I only cut that light on usually for when we win games. <laughs> <laughs> good thing my light bill ain't affected by this shit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Electric bill must be pretty damn good. Oh God! <laughs> I just hope the Bears look at that tape of what the Lions did to KC in KC and just kind of learn from that. Yeah, we don't have the personnel oh, to do plan. exactly what Detroit did, though. You, you, no, you know we don't, don't. But like I think we can still run the ball. We can still run yeah. the ball. We can still run block. With Not with Getzy. But here's my thing about defensively: this soft coverage bullshit is pissing me the entire fuck off. You yeah. sit up here, you land off 10 yards away from the goddamn plate. And they're picking on Stevenson. Allowing, oh, don't get me started on that shit. Because, uh, <laughs> Flus, you knew this boy couldn't guard one of the best goddamn receivers in football. Yeah. Why would you not have J.J. follow Mike Evans around? Goddamn yeah. it. Mike, Mike Evans is going to be my goddamn roommate. Yeah. He did so push off. I just wanted to point that out. Didn't know he did push off on that one. Oh, no yeah. doubt he did. No doubt he pushed off on that shit. Oh, that was a <laughs> nah, nah, I understand about not giving rookies the calls and shit, but goddamn shit. You it can't just allow a motherfucker to push him off. Uh, it, was, it was blatant. It was obvious. Yeah. And, but and but I will say this is, when though. it comes down to – when you're talking about coverage too, and I always bring out my guy with this one, it made a huge difference not having Kyler Gordon there. Huge difference. It, it yeah. Did. Well, it, it made a bigger difference without Ejac. Ejac is who – he's the one leader – well, the, the one I consider a leader on this team. Oh, that's that's Terrence 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 yeah, look at Terrence. Terrence. What the hell? Look at Terrence's face. Terrence. 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 Before, before the injury before last Terrence year, Terrence goes he, off he, on he, he was having a good year last year. Before he was before the foot injury. He did. I admitted that, too. He had a good year last year. I will admit that. He had a good year last year, even though Terrence still denies it. He had a good year last year. But my problem with him, these other goddamn players, is y'all talking too much shit. Before the goddamn yeah. season, talk about what the fuck you gonna do. Just shut your ass up and go fucking do it. Didn't yeah. didn't our defensive tackle freaking talk all this shit all off season about how all good that they're gonna be? I don't even think he's registered a fucking hit yet. Not just one. Justin uh, Jones yet in two games. Justin Jones. Yeah, Not I don't one. think he has done shit. He didn't have one. And then they Cole said they said him. there was one. I think six seventy reported that he wasn't even on the stat sheet in no, game one against Green Bay. No, Not he even for a hit. A he, push, he a, an assist, nothing. That's that's even crazy. Fact, even in game one, you go to the and tell me that we didn't have not one fucking pass down the field. Not one. Mm. Not fucking one. No, not one. No, not fucking one. Against that secondary, we made the Packers look better than what the fuck they did. A lot and of we time, upgraded. these games, we lose. Yeah. Most of the time, it's not the other team winning. It's us losing the fucking game. It's a matter of perspective. We get in our own fucking ways a lot of damn time. Because I'll, I'll say this we, about Eddie Jackson, though, since we went back with Eddie Jackson. Um, when he got hurt, you know, hugging air again, like he's really good at doing when he tries to make tackles. Um, he was That was when Brisker went out and he took Brisker's position. And then the first freaking drive that he goes to make a hit, he rolls his ankle or his foot or something. That same that. foot, too. That's what same, well, yeah. same foot. Now, the person who just commented and said that I'm smoking crack saying EJ was there, <laughs> didn't fully understand my goddamn comment. I say, if there was he a leader on that team, he's, nothing he's the only one. That. But, but that, that's, it's not enough because, again, if I'm on that sideline after a three and out, I'm going to judge – if I'm DJ Moore or Claypool or Mooney, I'm going to – hey, man, this motherfucker can't guard me. Hey, look at me. I'm open. Come on, man. Pick your fucking head up. You can't teach passion. You can't teach art out here. But these motherfuckers have none out here. They don't even fucking care that they even down as many points as they down most of the damn time. They go on the sideline. They like, shit. Oh, man. It is what it is. <laughs> you guys, you guys want to know? You guys want to know alarming stat? In two games, the Bears have 26 missed tackles. Easy. Twenty six fucking, and we paid Yannick Ngakwe, who I advocated for. 
I just don't like that. Ten million dollars. You should have sacked Baker. You should have sacked Baker. No, 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 no. Fuck that. No, no, no. I'm gonna go further than that. He should have knocked his goddamn equipment off his fucking body. <laughs> he should have got the damn ball loose both times he missed those damn opportunities to sack him. Yannick got away. We paying you ten million dollars to do that shit. I want my fucking money back. Now you wonder why he's a journeyman. I never wonder. wonder. I, I still think I still think Yannick is he's gonna he'll be he better. He better. He'll be fine. Think, well, I he'll be fine if the rest of the D line could just step. But, up. I mean, that's the thing. If you think of Yannick and his journey. He's always had a very good defensive lineman on the other side of him, too. Which yeah. So this is probably yeah. his he's worst. He's that. never really been the number he's, one. He's, he's, he's okay. still, he benefited from that. Absolutely. Even still, he's a middle-to-the-road sack guy. Yep. Who can't and stop he, the run? He, he, he can't he's stop the run ever. He's run ever. He's not. But he can sack with the best of them. Yeah, no. I mean, I will take I will take ten sacks a year. I mean, that's that's literally seven more than any of our defensive but, but line. I, I, I need I need them to be impactful sacks. Don't I just, agree with that. Don't just not, add not them sacks for them sacks just for the sake one. of it. I need to be doing something with those sacks. They need to be leading to something. Or I got them three and out or a sack fumble. Let, let, let's fumble. see. Let's see what Rick got to say. Rick, what you got to say? Yeah, you just sit there pretty quiet. I mean, I'm just trying to. Take it all in. I, I kind of knew pass rush was going to be an issue going yeah, into the season. I think most Bears fans really did. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't seem like the play calling has really helped with that mm -hmm. because I, they're not blitzing. You know, you're sending three and four guys, and it's just – but at the same point in time, you got to have confidence in your secondary before you're going to send those extra guys because mm -hmm. the four guys you send the five and the six guys, that leaves the guys in the back there – you know, um, with less help, and yeah. you know, when you don't get to the quarterback quicker, they're going to get down there and they're going to burn you. Yep. So, you know, but, but let me let me ask you Brown really said that too, though. Alex Brown mentioned yeah. you can't win your one on ones on this line, man. Yeah, exactly. What, what, what the fuck are we doing? Can, can yeah. we can we all admit though that Yannick is our best defensive pass rusher? I mean, that, there's yeah, no that, clearly no obviously when obviously. it comes down to that. Um, I mean, but, but the thing is, Green Bay Packers have one of the best tackles in the NFL right now. Why do you keep Yannick on him the whole game? Why don't you maybe try switching it, throw Yannick on the other side to try to like, make some fucking changes? If Adjustments. And that's yeah, yeah, the problem. It's all about the scheme. The Packers did and we didn't in the second exactly. half. They adjusted. Yeah. They adjust. And my thing is, my philosophy on life is, don't tell me I'm wrong when the shit you're doing ain't working. It's not working. Flo That's what I say. And Even if you don't want to get with the times, you got to get out of that temple too. You got to adjust. I, I got your high school freaking coaches that freaking call more diverse. Exactly. Than than <laughs> I mean, even Belichick. <laughs> That's why he's coming. a genius. He is. Exactly. He, he always adapts. When they yeah, know uh, what's coming, high school it's players real hard to freaking get. You know, I don't care yeah. how good you are. I don't care if you're Tom Brady mixed with Peyton Manning, and you got yeah. Jerry Rice over here and Randy Moss over there. When the defense knows what's coming. Mm -hmm. It's fucking hard to 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 succeed. It is, and, yeah. and I, I honestly, I rather I prefer the three four defense uh, than the four three. This four three, this soft oh. coverage bullshit. You're not jamming nobody up. You're not yeah, even throwing that damn elbow. That's why we. That's that's that's, that's, that's why we miss. Uh, uh, that's why we miss Travis Gibson because he was probably yeah. the best player in, in the preseason. Well, they let him go. Well, 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 let me play something else Gibson, Gibson produced those sacks behind in a three, the goddamn four. veteran. The, the, the goddamn veteran lineman that he was behind. He, yeah, he, he he's not that guy. He had the guy to leave. He Let me. But is but but is it, what we have on the team any better than what he is? Was Justin Jones? Yeah, and, you it know, wouldn't hurt to keep Travis let to see what he point do. something very glaring out to you guys when you mm -hmm. talk about soft coverage and what you need to help your secondary. You don't help your secondary by making them cover longer. You press yeah. up. Yeah. Press the you send up. some. Hey, guess what? If I go four three and Jack Sanborn's on the field. I'm about to put Tremaine and TJ into a double cover, into a uh, split the field in half in the middle, and Sandboard about to be my kamikaze guy. Press coverage. Hopefully, you'll get a turnover. Good at that Make the quarterback <laughs> throw the ball a second or a half yeah. earlier, and you see some different plays. But these egghead bastards that we got as a coach keep mm -hmm. wanting to fall back, keep it in front of you while you make somebody else dance in front of you. Guess what? Ain't nobody on that front four dancing. 
to be honest, person this isn't the early 2000s. To be honest, we, before that pick six. Not, six. Not, not, not only that, though, we sit up here giving up. We, we got players covering spaces, not players. They sit up here and run it in that, in that Packer game. They were running wild and fucking free. All that open field in the middle of the fucking field was open. They were eating our ass alive the whole goddamn game up the middle of the fucking field. You have a goddamn linebacker playing Aaron Jones. You know how fucking stupid that looks? Yeah, how right. stupid that sounds? Touchdown. Aaron Jones. And there it's where it led to a touchdown. And then, be honest, oh, I thought it would be ugly than week, uh, uglier than week one because even with all that before cool. Justin – uh, pick six in the end, it was a three point game, so I thought it would be more uh, of a higher score. Who so the defense the, made plays when it needed to, the defense they may not have been perfect. They, the they, some. they did make some, but it wasn't enough, especially given that we were still in this game throughout the entire game. Knowing yeah. because Baker Mayfield ain't a goddamn player, they ain't a quarterback that you got to worry about beating you. It's not, yeah, it's not true. one, but the fact that you sat here wasn't getting no turnovers on this, motherfucker, man. Yeah, you, you did we miss a pick on, six man. literally the first pass of the I, game. I, I, I wish they pass. I wish they I wish they ran that block punt in because it just felt like that was the that, why we couldn't yeah. pick that up. We're going this way, they're going that way. How the fuck are yeah. we not picking this up? Taking Even the, the kicker, the kicker beat the ball to recover Come the ball. On, I was man. like, yeah, oh hell. That's, that's the hits principle that our coach, you know. Fuck yeah, a hit. Yeah. Gather some damn body up and put the ass on the damn ground. Even after even after Mike Evans pushed off. Did y'all see number 26 following his ass down into the goddamn end zone? He turned yeah. around the opposite way. He was like, I'm, I'm going to help you out. I'm, I'm, I'm leading you this way. What the fuck are you doing? I'd have knocked this shit out of him. Was in a bitch just walking <laughs> him down into the end zone. Lucky enough, Mike Evans ain't fast enough that we caught him. But yet still, we shouldn't even let him even get that damn far down the damn field, man. But Justin, for the life of me, man, I have been advocating for you too long. You, you letting me down. Seriously. And and here's the thing, Bears Nation. I want everybody who's watching this understand this shit. We, as Bears fans, we fall in love with these goddamn quarterbacks because we like their personality. They're a good guy. You know, they, they have some little highlights here and there. But this franchise has done us a terrible-ass disservice for the last 100 years. We ain't had a goddamn quarterback, a franchise quarterback that we can talk shit about and, be, and have confidence. Hey, Cutler we ain't had one yet. Cutler ass owe me money. <laughs> I saw you type that early. You say you owe you money. money, man. Rick Man, that's all we want. That's all. Before him, I asked this, this like Super Bowl game. I answered my goddamn phone for three months after the goddamn Super Bowl game. Rex Grossman's ass was out there shaving points. Let me tell it. Can I throw the stat out there to you guys? There's a stat. I think it was going to week two when Justin Jefferson. They say he has more points than any yeah, other Bears right. receiver. What more receiver yards? Yard, 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 yard. So yard. this goes back to not. It doesn't matter which regime. The Bears are never known to draft and develop offensive, offensive talent players. other than running backs. Yeah, we're, we're always known as the monsters of the midway running kind of franchise. This ain't 1920, yeah. George. We got to live in the times now. <laughs> that's Our that's yeah. winning games. The and what did the Bulls and the Bears hire an offensive minded coach? Break, man. We we needed an offensive yeah, minded coach. And the fact that I, the I didn't Lions mind a defensive you know, minded coach. I did. But we we needed to give him a actual experienced Doug Peterson calling quarterback style offensive coordinator. I'll, not only just a coach, a coach that's won, that beat Billichet, that beat him. Not Doug Peterson was about as qualified as any coach. I don't know who all you had, but since we bring it up, me personally. I wanted Rex Ryan as our head coach, and I wanted uh, Jim Caldwell as our OC. Would have loved that. Rick, Rick, Rex Ryan wasn't coming out of there. Uh, out of Rex Ryan no, talks Rick, too much. Rick, that's Rick, what Rick, gets, Rick, gets him in trouble. He's too old now. Hey, no, no, it, no, 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 you can't say he's too old, old now. You well, can't Jim say he's like No, he, he hadn't coached in a while. He can't just get back in this shit and do that. No. Yeah, he can. But, and plus, he's not his father, okay? His but father, I do love how – Coach, he's a very Coach. innovative. Re Rex, Rex Ryan, Ryan holds his Bowl, players brother. accountable. He won a Super Bowl as a D coordinator with the Ravens. And, now let's and not Rex say. Ryan holds. Yeah, yeah I agree with JB. He's an innovative yeah. defensive. I'll player. put it to you like this, probably, but not a head coach though. He, he's probably like like you said. He's probably good as a coordinator, but not yeah. as a head coach. And that's, my he, thing, that's the thing. Listen, he's not good as a head coach. Stay in your lane. Don't 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 start branching off doing other shit that you ain't good at. He's not you good as a head coach when he took the Jets to back to Big back. Big Banjo is probably one of the best coordinators in the game. He's yeah. not a head coach. He's not you know, he coach, barely man. lasted he's in not. Denver. He's, and not. he's, he's just he's just a great coordinator. Right he's a great so, ass coordinator. And again, do what you do best. 
If you ain't no head coach, stick to the being the damn coordinator. Flutes, you're a defensive coordinator. I don't see your defensive coordinating shit. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> he's on, on, he's man. in he's in over his head. Oh, man. Yeah, listen, right. listen, I told so, folks if he loses game just as just as bad as Allen Williams has did, he might as well pack his shit up right now. Because he don't want to get seen uh, uh, at Target on State Street or goddamn at Whole Foods over there on Roosevelt. Because people going to walk up to him, and he ain't going <laughs> to like this shit that's going to be said to him. I, I need him to go ahead and pack your shit up, man. Just have a press conference and say, you know what? I bit off more than I can chew here. I, this, this ain't for me. I, I clearly don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Because I, <laughs> I can't sit here and, 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 and just basically take this organization and make him a, a legitimate playoff threat now because I, I, I ain't capable of that and that's okay at least you're being honest with your damn self but don't sit up here and piss on my goddamn shoe and tell me it's raining when your ass ain't doing shit that's uh, that's effectively getting us any production out this goddamn team or even e equating to any wins what the fuck else do you expect for us to do don't give us these goddamn politically correct ass answers in the press conference because the one thing i love about our chicago media they don't ask questions that we want to fucking know. Oh, yeah, they do. They, they, they hey, do. Man, they, they, they don't ask the same goddamn question to trip your ass up. Know. They don't ask the same question to trip your ass up just to see if you understood the damn question. No, you're going to answer these goddamn questions because we need answers. <laughs> we deserve answers, man. This is fucking Chicago. In my lifetime, y'all, I've seen every last one of my goddamn sports teams win championships. It's been so, since I was almost two. Let me, let me jump in here, Mr. Chicago. Yeah. Let me let me jump in here. So let's look forward to Sunday. Well, not look forward to it. Let's move Rabbit for next dream. Sunday. Let me get some predictions. Grogu is not happy. Let mm -hmm. me start with uh Rick. You've been you've been quiet, Rick. You know, I'm you, not you put uh, him right in the middle of those two. <laughs> I'm not trying to jump in, you know what I mean? Just let people do their thing. So what 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 do you think, Rick? What do you think about the Bears' chances on Sunday? You know, I think if the Lions can do it when nobody thought they were going to, it's possible. And I'm going to stick with that prediction that the upset is coming. I love my team. Justin's going to tear it up. And the defense is going to show up. That's my prediction. Bullshit. Okay. <laughs> so hey, you, they can just look at that game tape. I'm with Rick. If they look at what the Lions did, and if the if they can form any kind of game plan, if any, and just kind of just you know, if they could do it. We could do it. It's not like Kansas no, City right defense is world beaters. They got Chris Jones, but we could still test that secondary. Are y'all yeah. serious right now? It's time to hear grown folks talk and shut the fuck up here. Yeah? You can't be serious. That's right now, we're, 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 we're the new Lions of this division now. Time out. You're comparing a Lions team that went against Kansas City with no Chris Jones, no Travis Kelsey, no Travis Kelsey. and Kadarius Tony dropping four first down plays, one of them yeah. in a field goal position to win the game? Well, JB, do you still think all 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 Hold on. Hold on. And you think we got a chance? Hell no. Now that they got a healthy Chris Jones and oh, Travis Kelsey back oh, and a oh, pissed off Mahomes, oh, are y'all fucking crazy? Oh, so hold on. So let me get this straight. So you think? Hold on. I'm not saying that they gonna win, but you saying that there's no chance in hell that they that, that they got a chance of winning? No, none. Nigga, you no put to, to win the game. You no sit there. Chance. There's always a chance. I'm not gonna never say that there's zero fucking chance any fucking given Sunday. That's what the fuck is for. That's what that phrase is for. Any game Tony's going to have a couple of drops because he has, he has a, a fumble and a drop in, against Jacksonville. So it's no. not like their receiving core is no. that top notch. No, no, no. Listen, uh, let, let, me, let me say this, man. Uh, listen, I, right. I, I had this. Three straight fumbles by two receivers and one on a punt, then Mahomes threw an interception. How many times is that going to happen in a football game? L listen, man, I, I'm going to tell you all this. Their receiving core is not that good, though. Listen, I'm not the highest graded weed in the goddamn dispensary, but I'm going to tell you this much. <laughs> with, with Mahomes being the new GOAT, <laughs> Mahomes don't lose back-to-back -back games like that. Realistic, <laughs> if you have to put your goddamn money on this game, which I won't do no fucking more, I'm not betting against this motherfucker. No. He the new GOAT, man. He do GOAT shit. Like, 
Kansas City, they're the standard. They are where we want to be. They have what the fuck we want to have. Now, mind you, Pose came from over there. He spent 13 years over there with them. And he, he helped scout a lot of these goddamn superstar players they have over there to this Nagy day. Nagy did too. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nag- Nagy sat his ass in that goddamn room and just benefited from the shit. Let this be real. Yeah, yeah, no question. Because that dumbass that dumb ass trick game. play that his dumb ass called that goddamn game Thursday against the damn Lions. Okay, you, let's you, just hope Nagy will you, call him out of the game. You yeah. knew yeah, that I hope Nagy ass that did. Give him the, the freaking rings. <laughs> listen, listen, that, that dumb ass uh, third down, that fourth down play that he called, you knew that was some Nagy shit. He was nagging out there. That dumbass. He was he was nagging. But even still, man, <laughs> just been this, these are the Chiefs, man. I I would love to see us win this game, but I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Even in the game against Tampa Bay, as we scored a touchdown with Claypool, I couldn't even fucking get happy about that. Because you know what I did? It pissed me off that we scored. Because I'm like, what the fuck took you so long to do this? This ain't hard, man. You gonna sit up here and fucking tell me that we we took up all this time just to score this touchdown and still be in this game and yet we still lose running the same goddamn play three times in a row and thought some veteran goddamn linebackers wasn't gonna be hip to the shit. Come on, okay. man. Okay, so Mr. Chicago, I think you're pretty much saying that we don't have that much of a chance against Kansas City. I'm gonna do I like our wide receiver core over Kansas City wide receiver core better. outside Kelsey. Predicting That's just how I feel. I'm gonna do you one better. Yeah, that's how you feel like that's the third of grocery baggers, though, and they're still gonna whoop our ass. So. <laughs> listen, listen, it ain't gonna fucking matter. I'm gonna ask my, my co-host right here, Theodore uh, Bartholomew, right here. Uh, I just don't think- want KC secondary to get lazy. And say, oh, these receivers ain't gonna do nothing because they they coach ain't gonna game plan for them. I I, I like to catch them off guard. You know what I'm saying? I don't want their secondary to be too relaxed, thinking that you know. Yo, that they're so. not gonna go if I still think play head. cool more. I just think and, and commit. That's, that's Chicago over there having a conversation with that bear. He, 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 he don't even think we're gonna win, man. He said we ain't yeah, gonna win. He don't think we're gonna win either, huh? No, no, no. Listen, man. I don't think we're gonna win. I just don't want it to be a runaway. I don't want uh, it to be like, you know, listen, listen, Chris Jones like back. the Cowboys and Giants. Justin Fields is gonna die. If we, we lose 34 to 31, I am happy as hell. He did. He did already. He did. Damn. He's he gonna die with that visor on, huh? Listen, mm-hmm. Kansas City is gonna cremate our ass, man. They gonna cremate. Well, look, it's look, gonna be gold basket, man. Before we let you all go, <laughs> before we let you all go, because we got some more show to get off. For sure. I just wanted to say, my man, Mister Chicago, came in here like this. <laughs> <laughs> listen, if you listen, man. If I get one more motherfucker saying that shit, I'm gonna lose it. Hey, let, let you got a little Ray it. Lewis to him too. The way he talks, like like he gonna be in that locker room, like he gonna suit up. Oh, listen, yeah. man. Listen, get him in the locker room. Hey, freaking up. I'm oh, cussing yeah. everybody ass out. If I ever get allowed to be in that locker room, I'm cussing everybody ass out. You look like <laughs> Tank Tank Russell 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 Russell. Russell. I don't give a so, shit what you do. <laughs> so listen, being from Chicago, I, I went to CBS High School, home of Dick Buckus, home of my boy Bernie Mac. My picture, I, I, I'm, in my, I'm in my high school mm-hmm. Hall of Fame. My picture is on the same wall that Dick Buckus' picture is on. So I saw Dick Buckus at the game uh, week one. I was watching the, uh, watching the game. I saw him there with Richard Dent. I tweeted uh, Dick Buckets after the game, and I said, "Sir, as a fellow CBS alum, a Hall of Famer, I want to sincerely apologize to you for the shit show that you actually had to fucking be subjected to, because that wasn't no fucking football game. More specifically, that wasn't Bears football. I don't know what the fuck that was. Yeah. That was a bunch of goddamn Amazon drivers putting goddamn <laughs> uniforms on, calling they goddamn the football players. <laughs> it's, it's a, it, Mr. Chicago, it's all right. You can get your revenge on uh, T Nick over here. <laughs> hey, man, <Nick laughs> hey, yo, listen, he does look like Lovey. We need to invite Lovey on the pitch. Everybody agrees to this. Everybody agrees to this. That would be nice if we get Lovey on the pitch. So that would be a perfect transition. We gotta let you, we gotta let y'all go, man. We got to thanks for coming out, man. Appreciate y'all for having me, man. man. Definitely yeah. look forward to being on the show again. Man, we, y'all hit me up, man. We gonna have yeah. you back, Mister Chicago. Matter of fact, we might let you have your own show. 
<laughs> I, I, might, I might need to, man, because I, I, I got some nobody else. in mind. Yeah, I, 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 I want to we'll barely... We'll call it yeah. pissed off Chicago Ain't fans. Ain't nobody else real. talk with you, Todd. Get nobody else in. I'm cussing the whole entire <laughs> staff out. I won't watch that at work, so we're good. Yeah, man. Right. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks all, all you guys. Thanks for coming on. Your contributions, everything. Yes, we appreciate it. We're going to have all three of y'all back, especially the mod down there, Black Sam. Have a great night, guys. Thanks. All right. Y'all right. have a good one. Yep. <laughs> wow. Great guys, man. Great guys. Mr. Chicago had a lot to say, but you know what? He warned me when I talked to him earlier. He said it. He said, man, I got a lot to say. And you know what? A lot of things that he was saying was valid, but some weren't. He said he said a few uh, a few uh, things that I kind of raised my eyebrows at, but for the most part, he, he was saying the truth. Yeah, what y'all yeah. think? I mean, they all were—they all had some. Well, except for the case, they, they speak with passion. But they all had a lot of the things right in the same sentiment about yeah. the coaching staff, the play calling, the effort. And I'm like, when you really look at it, and it's like, mm-hmm. are they are they really trotting out there, not playing with with a lot of hunger and a lot of a, a lot of vigor and a lot of energy? Or are they just really just getting out matched, out schemed, out coached, and they looking like, dude, fix it, and they're not getting any answers, dude? Like, I, hits, hits, stick with the hits, and maybe they are losing faith. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a buck with you. Going into this game, you know how dangerous Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson can be. Know what Tampa did to them? Blitzed them 21 times. Because Kirk Cousins struggles with pressure. You know who else struggles with pressure? Baker Mayfield. I would have took a page out of their book and said, you know what? Absolutely, I would Let me blitz them. Absolutely, I would have. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But just the in, in, the adjustments, like, like people want to talk and be like, oh, we held. But <laughs> there were some plays that Tampa Bay left on the field just like we did. Baker had 200 yards passing in half. I was like, oh, my God, this dude going to go for 400. And then the worst thing about it, too, is we got linebackers this offseason who are dogs. They tackle it. They doing what they supposed to do. They getting tackles. Yeah, they can do that shit. But we still just don't run blitzes or anything. You just – I don't fucking know. So, look, foul mouth. You ready for your segment? Yeah, let's get it. All right, let's go ahead and do that, man. But woo, I don't know uh if people already saw your thunder on that one, but shit, fuck it. Let's go ahead and do it. All right. If I can find the shit. I can find it. Shit. I can find it. <laughs> we got too much shit up there. We gotta start doing uh, it. Yeah, I gotta start doing it. What are you saying? Terrence is a hoarder. <laughs> he should have had it queued up before Here we go. Here before we go. he said it, yes. <laughs> so, keeping it a stack. Our offensive coordinator is offensive. He's offensive in his play calling. He shouldn't have never been an offense. How the hell did you go to yourself? I don't know how I did that. What the fuck? You, you I, don't know know. What? I was trying to do that for you. Hey, put the show back on the tracks, Chris. Put the show back on the yeah, tracks. Chris. Come on, right, come on. Chris, come on. Come on. Man, God, the movie, man. Damn, man. This is why we need a producer. <laughs> you ain't never lied. T back there drinking goddamn shit. God knows what's gonna pop on this motherfucker next. It's offensive. It's offensive from the play calling that he's doing. It's offensive from the way that he has gone and taught Justin Fields this offense. It's offensive that his offense in in, in, in totality is all fucked up. It's offensive. 
the Chicago Bears, you have a special quarterback that you cannot sit up there and somehow unlock. But then again, when we kind of think about it, why are we surprised? This shit has been going on, shit, before my fucking time. Like they said, Sid, Sid Luckman is our only fucking franchise quarterback. And tell you the truth, is he really a franchise quarterback? I don't think, honestly, that we've ever had one. It's because of people like Lou Getze, people like Matt Eberfuss. Yes, I'm out on those guys. I told you, anytime Chicago teams hire anybody, I give them my opportunity. It's over with. You guys are ruining yet another quarterback. Because God forbid that he goes somewhere else and becomes a fucking pro bowler, perennial pro bowler. We don't need that shit. That's my keeping the stack. Keeping the stack, this goddamn team is terrible. But we do play the Chiefs Sunday, prime time. Any given Sunday. If I'm a bed man, I'm damn sure I ain't bed for us. <laughs> but that's any given Sunday. Any given Sunday. I don't know a lot of people that are, that will vote for the – I mean that will bet against <laughs> the Chiefs. You have to ask Harry what the odds are in this one for Vegas. And I can't man, we should have had Harry come on the show. We but Harry, Harry, Harry said good night. He got to go to bed. But oh. I thought Harry had put the odds up earlier, like way earlier. But here we again. He might have. Let me see if I can find it. I hate that blind optimism that I think what was his name? The gentleman in the middle, and then Samuel L. Sam Blackwell said about Rick, you know Rick. Rick, do whatever the Lions did. Like, are we serious? We take what out of the page, but the, we don't have the personnel that the Lions do on defense. The Lions do don't have the personnel. It means something when Travis Kelsey is it not does. playing. Oh, it, does. it means something when Chris Jones is not playing. And you not know who's not playing too. for us? Kyler Gordon. Mm-hmm. You know who else is not playing for us? Eddie Jackson. Eddie Jackson. You know who else ain't playing for us? Tevin Jenkins. You know who probably is going to play, but might as well not? Lucas Patrick. What the <laughs> hell do you – the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sacked Justin six times. Six. You telling me KC ain't going to be somewhere around there? Come on, man. Like, we we just – I'm not on the Bears train to the point where I'm delusional. I want my team to win. But it's time to start calling spade spade. And I told y'all last year with that Nathaniel Hackett shit happened, I saw what was coming. Warren told us on Sunday he saw what was coming. This ain't the well team point, dog. that's going to ever be moved by this coaching staff. And remember, Fowl, I had a stat for you. When when, when they sit up there, and we and I agree with you, Allen Williams is going to be the scapegoat. He's going to end up being the yeah. scapegoat. It's not fair. It's not his fault. Last time, you're right. I told you. I said I said he was a defensive coordinator one time in his life for two years. T, stop messing with the screen. Oh, shit. Keep your hands off the screen. <laughs> put, put your hands up. I don't want it on me either. I want my four brothers on. I mean, my three brothers on here so we can talk. No, I said four because there go Grogu. Get me off of this single stuff, man. I don't like that. My point is this. When you bring a defensive coordinator in that runs your own system and it equally fails the same when you run it, then you go back and be like, oh, well, he was never a good coordinator either. Well, you know what? He's got two opportunities to be a coordinator in his life with the same team. One year he had the 14th ranked defense. The next year he had the 32nd. Everybody was hurt. Guess what's happening right now? 32nd ranked defense. (laughs) Everybody's hurt this good. Everybody's playing is bad. Ooh. What do you think he can do? If Ibra Flues was supposed to be this guru, he would have been fixed it. He's not what y'all think he is. Poles, I blame you because you didn't give him enough ammunition. You weren't aggressive enough in free agent to get some of those top, t- top D linemen that we all wanted. You just weren't. 
So this is what we have. Record is the record, despite the 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 the, the tanking aspect of it, whatever. Matt Eberflus is three, what three and fifteen as a head coach? Yeah. Not good. Three and fifteen. The rec his record is his record. There is a chance that we can start this season zero and five, y'all. Zero and five. Put 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 the schedule up, T. I'm telling you, realistically. This, this is the this is the one thing I will say about the poll situation, which I do I agree with everything that you're saying with the poll situation. But when when it comes down, I, I lost my fucking train of thought. God damn it. Just cause you uh, y'all drinking, man. <laughs> no more motherfucking drinking on the show. I'll stop drinking when you stop cussing. <laughs> that ain't gonna fucking happen. <laughs> so again, we might not win. We might not have a chance to win until Week Six against Minnesota, y'all. Right. Now I remember what I was gonna say, though. So what, right. what makes you think we can't beat them? <laughs> they want to just like us. They're, they're playing better, though. Hey. What makes you think that we can't beat Washington? They were beat us. Washington's not playing bad either. Well, first of all, Washington's 2-0, and and their defense is playing lights out. Denver's defense have been playing good. They had a hiccup in Sean Payton. I mean, hell, Sean Payton is Sean Payton. You heard what Jamon Bushrod said. It's just They're a matter of time. Two. It's yeah. just a matter of time. Yeah. Right, but this is, JB, this is where I was going with the poll situation, now that I remember, got my train of thought back. Um, when it comes down, I, I, I'm not saying that I don't think he was, like, pushing enough to try to get a defensive end, but he was not willing to overpay somebody that he did not think was going to come in and give you this, the production that was needed because he said it from the get go. He is building through the draft. We are going into this next draft. This is supposed to have one of the best of like huge amount of really damn good pass rushers coming out of this draft. But also quarterbacks as well. Quarterbacks as well. But, but I mean, I, I we can we can go out and find the next great fucking quarterback if Getsy's fucking no, you can't. Shit. Well, I'll why, put it to why you. would you want to get a quarter? Why would you want to draft Caleb Williams for Luke Getsy to ruin him? Why? See, I I agree hundred percent with you on that one. If you are gonna go draft Caleb Williams, then you are firing that entire coaching staff and you are starting over. Someone else, someone else says something too about Caleb Williams, even though I do like him. You also got to remember. Williams has a lot of the same issues that Justin Fields Yes, has. he does. He holds the ball even longer. Yes, he does. Yeah, exactly. watch the USC yes, game. Yes, he does. He'd be like, well, <laughs> I don't understand why people are yeah. Yeah. Like, come on, man. He you does. He has a lot of those same issues. He does. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's what makes it fucking scary. Thank you. Because, like, regardless of how we felt last year, and I will die on this shield, sometimes you just know and sometimes you can just feel it. Luke Getze, like, like we've been talking about all this time, never called plays. But he gets success credit because he was Aaron Rodgers' quarterback coach. What did he really teach Aaron Rodgers? Did he change Aaron Rodgers' mechanics? Nope. Never did, did he make him throw the ball better? Nope. Did he fix his footwork? Did he fix his mind, his vision, his processing, anything? But you got to have vision. Well, clearly Ryan Pauls ain't had no goddamn vision. If he because Getsy is what Getsy is, he's nothing. Frank, nothing. he ran a double corner route with man, Kirby I'm not Washington disagreeing with you, man. Getsy is shit, dude. I can't stand Getsy. I, I am that. on board with getting rid of all of them, but I'm still not on board with. Cutting ties. I think this qualifies as a JB rant. Oh, yeah, I ain't getting rid of. I ain't I, nah, One thing I'll sit up there and say: fuck the coaches, fuck the coordinator. I'm not gonna give up on the GM. I gotta no, actually no, no, sit up there. You don't. No, no, you don't give up on polls. But like I said, I still feel held accountable. Yeah, help. You yeah, I'll give you that. But I still feel and 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 foul. Remember, we talked about this offline way back. I don't think Getty was his real choice and higher. I really don't. I think it's that was about, about Eber Eber I don't think so either, man. I'm, I'm sorry, really Eber Eberflus, because yeah. I don't think so either. remember there's that 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 little just like how old boy got the uh got the job with the Chargers, and you see he's dumb as a box of rocks. They can't win nothing. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're starting to pair agents and coaches and stuff. You know, they started to do that little funny nepotism thing that's just not working. Yeah. The thing right. that I the thing that I have the most problem with when you when you watch the Bears play, you look at what worked on the first two drives, and then you just don't go back to it until way at way in the what was that the, the third quarter? Well, it's no late in the third quarter. But my it's, point is, what makes you think that your backyard play calling is actually going to work against accomplished NFL teams? Mm-hmm. All right, so check this out. Going into the year, what was the one thing that the Chicago Bears was good at? Stopping the uh, uh, run, 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 uh, blah, blah, blah. run blocking. Exactly, rushing the fucking ball. What the fuck are they not doing this year? Running the ball. Bo- oh, I have those numbers. I have What's those numbers. Mean? Hold on. I'm going to give you two stats that's going to blow your mind. Well, maybe not blow your mind, but maybe our, our, our viewers. Did you all know, and this is not this is not a joke, how much the pay, how much the Buccaneers outplay how, had uh, more plays than we did? 68 to 45, right? Talk about balance. Baker Mayfield had 34 attempts. Tampa Bay had 34 rushes. You can't get more balance than that, right? 120 yards rushing, 300 some yards passing. You know what the Bears did? No, no, no. 29 passes. 16 rushes. We said it from the get-go. We want a balanced offense going into this season. They said they want a balanced offense. But, but, but the thing is, they, they're not they're not fucking running. The, well, first of all, this getting running back shit is not working. You need to sit up there. You need to have a fucking bail cow. I don't know which one of the three that you want that to be. Stick with one of them. Honestly, I say it's Roshan because he's the guy. First of all, you can't put Herbert back there to fucking block. He's the worst motherfucking uh, uh, running back block. Herbert did improve in catching the ball, though. I'm gonna give him a- uh, I'm gonna no, he ain't. Better. No, he ain't. Better. No, he ain't. You want to know why? We don't even fucking know because they don't really pass on the fucking ball. Well, he's got quite a few passes. And I don't he's want got that. the most targets. Yeah. Hell, yeah. Claypool had eight targets last game. But my point is, Roshan Johnson oh, had DJ four not rushing had attempts. Khalil had seven. Yeah. Valus had one for negative three. The other four went to Justin. Hey, JB, doing? JB, I think you need some chicken wings or something, man. Relax. Relax. Speaking of chicken wings. I want no goddamn chicken wings, man. All right, well, you ain't got to have none there, but for the rest of us that might want some or a burger or some kind of game day food, Shit is we have a new segment. Another one? Yeah, and he's actually going to tell us where we can go get something good to eat. Is that okay? Or no? All right, so anyway, Mr. Duwell is going to give us a new segment. It's called Game Day Eats. Yo, it's a special day today. Um, Shout out to the Chicago uh, Clubhouse Network for having me on today to talk about game day eats because I love game day eats. I love hanging out with, with my guys, getting cold beers, eating good food. And it don't get no better than this right here. Today, we have from Medley Barbecue and Grill, on 83rd and Stony Island, I believe it was 8340 Stony Island. Um, they have a burger called the Medley Burger. So I went in there one day and I said, hey, you should put a brisket on that thing. You know what I'm saying? Since since they don't do pork, they don't do bacon. And so it's very weird for me to just have a burger with just a burger because who does that? 
So I said, hey man, let me get that brisket on, on there. And it's been on the menu ever since. So I felt like I needed to like christen the name and name it the Bear Down Burger. Shout out to the Chicago Bears. I just can't think of nothing more bear downish than a piece of juicy brisket and two delicious patties, cheese, onions, pickles, and a dash of mustard, which just hits the spot oh so well. And you know I love my fresh cut fries. Yum, yum, yum. But I'm telling you, all game long, you're gonna be you're gonna be grabbing this burger and bearing down just like this. You can't miss, man. You really can't miss this situation. And medley too, they got fantastic wings, ribs, beef ribs. Um, they do fish fry Fridays from time to time. They got turkey tips, turkey links. They do. They even do turkey legs. I need you to come through, grab you some do well, because they also sell that there as well. You can get all five flavors, or and get you one of these medley burgers, man, and get your game day started right. Y'all have a blessed day. Now I'm hungry. I'm as hungry. Shit. Now I'm, I'm hungry as shit. Right. No. I want a burger. My stomach was growling like hell watching that shit I eat. That is where I'm going Sunday. I'm getting a burger from there on Sunday. Oh my God. With the brisket on it? Come on, man. Come on, dog. And then you got the Mr. Duel juice to go with it? It's over with for me. And I'm going to have a more beer. Yeah, it's over with for me, man. So that's what I'm doing game day. What y'all doing game day? Fucking crying. Baby, you, you're gonna be sad. You're gonna be I'm gonna be fucking crying watching pre Man, what in the blue hell was that? <laughs> that was game day eats. What the fuck did it look like? It looked like somebody eating, and I don't want to hear nobody smacking. We talking about the bears, man, and I'm pissed off. Let's get back to the business, man. We talking about game day food. Yeah, let's get back to the business. <laughs> back, back back to the business. You still awake? What you I'm doing? Still here. You I'm good? Still here. Shit, I don't know for how much longer. Shit, it's ten thirty. Goddamn, I gotta get up and go to work in the morning. We two and a half hours in, so you know what? Maybe we should just get to some shouts. We ain't do predictions yet. Well, yeah, yeah. let's run through a quick prediction. We kind of did. We kind of <laughs> did. Predictions. Yeah, we ain't yeah, coming no score. <laughs> we all predicted the ass gonna, gonna lose though. Didn't really say no score, but. I mean, right, go here, ahead. If you here's my score, quick prediction. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. I'm going to go 34 to 24 Chiefs. I ain't saying shit. Chiefs going to win. I ain't predicting <laughs> no score. I ain't going to even do that to my fucking self. I'm already depressed that they're going to probably fucking lose as it is. JB wanted to say a prediction, so you go ahead, JB. I, I'm, I'm kind of like around Frank. I got 40 to 23. 40. I'm hoping they let up before they get to 40. Green Bay put up 38. The Chiefs yeah. got it. My homeboy is pissed off. All right, well, my <laughs> prediction is a lot to a little. A lot to a little. Kansas City is going to win the game. Unfortunately. I mean, I, I hope I'm wrong. But I, I, I really hope something they just surprise everybody. But I doubt I'm wrong, but I have no faith I, in I it. I hope I do. Look at this. Crazy A said bears are gonna surprise everyone. He put others. a clown emoji. You saw he put that. He didn't mean that. He put a clown emoji. I know he was he was kidding, but I thought it was funny. It, that, uh, that, look at my mom, 3817. Yeah, I, I ain't mad at that either. I'm hoping Justin Fields has a turnaround game and has a pretty solid, solid game. But still, no shot you're stopping the Chiefs. With hey, Kelsey man. and Jones Somebody back. go give JB a hug. Come he, here, JB. Come he here. He needs a hug, man. Yeah. 
Brick giving you a, a virtual <laughs> hug, man. No damn hug. Need some coaching. You want to go take a shot? Wow. <laughs> Okay, man. Let's let's go ahead and get into some shout outs. Uh, shout but outs. I'm, I'm always I'm always first, foul. So you know, I'm always first. All right. No, Love you. You ain't been the last two weeks because yeah, they keep right. calling me out. I just don't go take ahead. it. Go ahead. Start <laughs> it's the season and they're letting us down. I never get to have a hawk talk right now, but I understand it. I am giving my shout out. And I hope JB's mom's on there listening. I don't know why I say I hope. I know she's on there listening. Um, Connor Bedard's first preseason ish oh, game, first time in a Blackhawks uniform, he puts up a hat trick. Great start. Um, wait, so he did that him. one. One thing I am going to get a, a non shout out. Hold on, hold on, hold on Frank. did he do that? Or are you hoping that he does that? No, he did that. He put up a hat trick in his first game. Oh, uh, and he just, yeah, ridiculous. Wait, the season started already. It's preseasons for them. It's kind of like oh. scrimmage preseason. So, but it, it's in uniforms against other teams. So, um, but I'm going to give a quick little non shout out here. And JB's going to appreciate this with Eberflus. If you're going to fucking have a hits principle, how about you fucking do it? Because if I have to watch another missed tackle, Another dropped interception, another fumble. Like this, this is. I made a little clip here. This is who I want to see. We will be perfect in every aspect of the game. You drop a pass, you run a mile. You miss a blocking assignment, you run a mile. You fumble the football, and I will break my foot off in your John Brown hind parts. And then you will run a mile. Perfection. Let's go to That's what I fucking want. Brown hind parts. <laughs> so I am I am giving the shout out to Herman Boone right there and that remember the Titans team right there because that's the coaching I want to put this hits principle bullshit that we're talking about. Hold people accountable. Good oh, shit, man. Frank. Good shit, man. All right, so I got my Brown shout Brown out in my hind shout out here, so. All right, go ahead, JB. Let her rip. I'm last. I got the chat. Oh, yeah, JB. Foul no, you always stack next with the chat, aren't you? It's on you, foul mouth. Get it, foul. Oh, shit. Okay. So I want to give a shout out to the chat. The chat was lit tonight. want to give a shout out to uh, our guest, Jay Bushrod. want to give a shout out to uh, Bears fans that came on, Mr. Chicago, Rick, Sam. I uh, want to give a shout out to you three brothers, T Nick, Frank the Tank, JB. Shout out to my man Grogu. Remember, you can catch him on the Mandalorian, on the Disney, uh, Disney Channel or Disney Plus. Subscribe to that. Also, want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Hugh. Have a good time at Hugh. Also, to Moore's Beer. That's what you should drink, Moore's Beer. I want to give a shout out to In the Zone. Uh, also Lisa. to Lisa. Okay. Um, also, remember to like and subscribe to the Chicago Clubhouse podcast. We really would appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? If you like what we were talking about today, you like the fact that we had Gerard Bush ride on, like. Also, remember to subscribe. Okay. Um, shout out once again to. Pitties, shout out to my fiance, shout out to um, this great city of Chicago, shout out to the Bears, come on man, bring us a fucking win, Justin, take the fucking vibes off, bro, it ain't fucking working, man, try something new, play, try something new, also, another word of advice, Justin, if you don't like them dumbass calls, that little guess he's called, audible your own shit, man, audible, audible to your own shit, shit. If you can't get to your second read and that motherfucker ain't open, put on your track shoes and run to the defense. Since we over here quoting, remember the Titans. What did my man say? What did the coach sit up there and say? He said, you will blitz all night. 
Catch Blitz. <laughs> Blitz his ass the whole night. Might not want to do that against No, me. Blitz his ass. What receivers he got besides Kelsey? Blitz his ass the whole night. And I'm done. Um, you're, you're muted there, Chief. You're this muted. This motherfucker don't pick up a drink no more. <laughs> you don't pick up another motherfucking drink no more. You know how to unmute yourself, Chief? Somebody give this motherfucker some water. Goddamn, <laughs> Makes it even better him laughing, still on mute. Good. Oh, he just realized. I didn't know I was young. <laughs> what you I think this means? I said, if you don't blitz. I will kick my foot up your John Hines parts and then make you run. JB, it's on you. Yeah, you don't blitz that guy. He's like number one against the blitz. You just talk. You just pray when you go. Yeah, this. when he had wide receivers. No, last year he didn't have any wide receivers. He won a Super Bowl. Manuel yeah, Valverde, Sam Blackwell. Kasim Baker, new guy, John Robbins. Thank you for chiming in. I don't know where John comes from, but he chimed in. <clears throat> Sarah Lowe, thank you for chiming in. Juanita Motti, thank you for chiming in. Some dude named Frank O'Dowd. I don't know who he is, but you know what? He's probably a cool dude. Jeremy Bowman, welcome back. Another new one, Michael Wells. Thank you for chiming in. Sorry, respect one of our few ones chiming in and coming back to check us out. Another newbie, Tom Mazetta. Sorry we didn't get your chat on Tom at about 8.30. Stay with us. He said, who do we have to F to get a win here? And S and some effing bacon, too. I don't know what that means. I love bacon, but thank you for chiming in. He said, who do we got to fuck to get a win around here? And some fucking it. bacon. You said it, not me. Aaron Kowalski, thank you for chiming in. Brand new. Brad Gessert, another one. Brand new. Thank you for chiming in. See how we growing, man? And it's because of you all. Continue to like and subscribe. We bring you premium content. And we're here because we love the bears. Harry Bird, R O G. Catch Harry on what is Harry's show? Um the over under. The over under, right? Fridays. Catch Harry Bird, Harry the Greek on the Under Over Podcast. Vernon Fairley, thank you for checking in. Vernon is one of our P1s came back. One of our day one P1s bullets back in the house. My brother from another. Appreciate you. Kyanel Lewis. Appreciate you. Brand new for chiming in. King. Hey, we got a lot of brand new guys chiming in, man, and I like it. Let's keep going. Camila White. Thank you for chiming in. She said, let Groku speak on it. I see what she's here for. Yeah, Muhammad, one of our people that's from our network on our Thursday show. Thank you for chiming in. Jalene M. Bonda. Don't know where you from. You're brand new. Thank you for chiming in. Shaka Strong, brand new. Thank you for chiming in. Jaleen, I didn't see Jaleen chime in. She chimed in. Chimed in. My wow. hey, our Big Ten ref and resident Chi Town homeboy, Lorenzo Clemens. Always love, bro. Always love for Lorenzo chiming in. Let's see who else we got. Here's that Frank O'Dowd guy again. I don't know. Crazy Ace oh, TV. Thank you for chiming in. And I'm rolling up the pin, and I think that's it. Oh, my no. My cousin Ashton chimed in. There we go. Thank you for chiming in. I ain't never seen, I ain't never seen none of my family chime in. Baby. Hey, we rolling, baby. Let's keep it you moving. Ah. None of your family ever chimes keep in. It moving. Oh, none of my blood family, bro. Hey, maybe they're like this. They are out to love. My they're blood family. Old. I ain't never seen that before. Hey, Trey Shy. Trey Shy is becoming one of our P1s. Thank you for chiming in, Trey Shy. We love to have you on your content. Uh, I think that is it, gentlemen. And yes, and oh, nope, Scott J. Hopkins. Scott, thanks for chiming in. Appreciate Shaka, you. Shaka, Shaka. I said Shaka already. Oh, you did? Yep. You got to see that. You got to roll with me. You got to oh, keep up. That's fast. why I missed Jaleen, because Jaleen was right before Chaka. Hey man, baby, I talk fast and you move slow. You gotta pick up the pace. You know what I'm saying? That's real pimping right there. Step up your game. And Kristen Pertit from Plunk chimed in. I ain't heard Kristen's name in a month of Sundays. Thank you, thank you, thank you for chiming in. We appreciate you. Hercules. Hercules, Hercules. And last but not least, you all know how I end every show. 
if we only have one person watching, that's my mom, that's my heart, that's my love, Miss Sandra, as she's so passionately called, I just call her, hey, Ma! I don't even know what she's yeah, doing back there. Know. So where's the meat, like? hey, Ma! <laughs> Never know what she's doing, man. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> back you almost got your ass from Chuck. You don't even understand. <laughs> But shout out to my mom. Love you. Up to you, T. Dang, guys. Oh, shit. Everybody ready? Hey, I want to get one more quick shout out, too, before you go. Oh. Um, for the people who did not watch, we have our new shows on Thursdays. I want to give out to Sugar and Vodka, who is the new host on the show. So check out Thursday shows. Still got to give shout outs to Amp. I got to call him Amp. Sorry. Um, got to get used to that. Oh, and Amp and Diab as well on those Thursday shows. And I forgot, Ant did chime in for a half a second. Something's going on, and he asked for our prayers for oh, a moment. Prayers for sure. Just sure. a moment of silence, T. Just real quick with the news. Just a quick moment of silence <laughs> to our man Anthony Stewart, one of our Clubhouse Network uh, contributors. Um, man, whatever you're going through, brother, just reach out. Well, I don't call away sometimes words are very powerful, very healing. So just reach out to us when you can. Let us know other things all right. Prayers to you and your family. T is on you. <laughs> I know he's behind, but we'll Oh my God. <laughs> you wait till after know. the friends been said to turn it off. the whole fucking producer away. <laughs> Oh, and we're hiring for a producer if anybody wants to apply. <laughs> Stop it. I'm sorry. Stop that. Oh, my God, man. I'm good. Okay, so I'm not going to reiterate everybody uh, that JB said in the chat. Good night. But we appreciate all y'all in the chat. But if you did not say anything, you did not contribute to the chat. You are you a are lurker. Lurker. A lurker. Hell for love. However, we do appreciate you too. Because you put up with our foolishness. So thank you. And continue to Check out the Chicago Clubhouse podcast. Like and subscribe on YouTube because some of these episodes are not going to be available on Facebook. Yeah, I want you to like and subscribe to YouTube. Uh, oh, my man Don, what's up, man? man? What's the Don? Just, hey, Don, just chime in at the end, man. Late, late the the party, Don, but happy you made it, my man. What's happening, Don? Don is the rocker. Hey, but make he sure is, he you is a rocker. Subscribe, sure. You subscribe to the YouTube page because this Facebook stuff is going to go away. And the LinkedIn and the Twitter, all of that is going to go away. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube. We're also going to start doing more content. We're going to start doing shorts. We're going to start doing um, personal things, but it's going to be uploaded to YouTube. So if you want to check all that content out, subscribe to YouTube so you can get the notification. Uh, I don't really want to say much tonight because we're already two hours and 43 minutes in. So uh, I think I'm going to cut it pretty short. And I'm going to say thanks, everyone, for checking us out. Make sure you like and subscribe to YouTube, Facebook, X and LinkedIn. And with that being said, we got anything else we want to say, players? Play, play. Time. Time to get some sleep. Yeah, I hear that. JB. You always have you always have some kind of word you want to say, JB. Good night, motherfuckers. <laughs> Mahomes, that's my word. Frank? Fields is my word. I'm going Fields too. <laughs> <laughs>
I want to get your fucking visor on. Real good. What you got to say? See something, man. LASIK or something. I don't know, man. Check those motherfucking eyes. But I thought you had to decide. Are you a wolf? Or a sheep? Well, I mean, we're going to got to decide whether you're a wolf or a sheep. What are you, Grogo? You're a wolf or a sheep? We're sheep this Sunday. <laughs> this has been a Chicago Clubhouse Network production. Go Black! You're still here. It's over. Go home. Night, Canada. See, Canada. Philip Pippen.